Nashville against the Pittsburgh Penguins. Steve Thomas this week was the exact opposite. Starting off with a sour note, but culminating in his first goal in 11 games. For Tommy Soderstrom, the entire week was a pretty good one. And the Islanders hope it continues against the Montreal Canadiens up next. Memorial Coliseum in Uniondale, New York, the Islanders' home ice surface, and the visitors tonight are the Montreal Canadiens, the once high-flying Montreal Canadiens, the team that has Patrick Waugh in goal, the team that has beaten the Islanders twice at the fabled form in Montreal and now come into the Nassau Coliseum. Hi, everybody. I'm Jake McDonald with Ed Westfall and Stan Fischler, and a former Montreal Canadian great, Boom Boom Jeffrey, on is with us tonight. If this is not the Montreal Canadiens team that everybody expected. Uh, they're, uh, they're reeling after what's happened in the last two games. They are, Jason. When you talk to the coaching staff, they don't know who's going to show up. They know who's going to show up on the lineup, who the players are going to be, but they don't know whether they're going to show up and play or not, and that's one of the problems that the Montreal Canadiens are facing right now. And with the Islanders and the Montreal Canadiens, they both played 18 games. And the stories are brought to you by Meineke. In the Montreal story, yes, they're shell-shocked. 94 shots against in the last... Two games, 53 last night, highest number ever against the Canadian team. And what about this? 13 to 1. Don't like those odds. The goals against in those two games, 13 for the opponents, only one for Montreal, and only one of the 13 were on the power play. Mere mortal, and you can put, put a question mark on number three because we're talking about Patrick Waugh. He's faced 86 shots in his last two games, given up. 13 goals, seven of them against Philadelphia, half a dozen last night. And when you look at Patrick Wad, you look at his record in the last 11 hockey games, he's four, five, and two, and that's not going to be acceptable to him. No, and they're going to come back with Ron Tucknut uh, in tonight's hockey game against the Islanders. And the Islanders' stories, Beers, Bob Beers, signed as a free agent in the offseason, an offensive defenseman. Picked up from the Edmonton Oilers, actually signed away from Edmonton in the offseason and then suffered that injury in the mini-training camp. He'll make his first appearance tonight, becomes the 11th defenseman to play this season. So, who's next? Coming up from uh, Denver, hard to say, but there's the name that sticks in there, Marinucci, and there's also the name Medill. Both are forwards. They pretty much depleted, depleted the defense score in Denver as well. Even Steven, Steven Thomas. Stevie, after 11 games without a goal connected here on Saturday night against Pittsburgh, he said he could feel the weight of the world lifted off his shoulders when the puck finally went in. It wasn't beautiful, but it counted. Doesn't matter to him. He just wanted to get that one so that he can get on with the next batch of them, and that's what he's hoping for. Stevie and his Islanders up against these Montreal Canadiens here tonight. Crowd still filing in as uh, we settle back to see the Islanders and the Canadian. Let's get you uh, back to our coverage after this. New York Islanders hockey is brought to you by Bud Ice, the official beer of the NHL. By the Discover card. It pays to discover the card that pays you back. By Volvo. Volvo reminds you to drive safely. And by Nobody Beats the Wiz. For state-of-the-art home electronics, computers, cameras, music, movies, and more, Nobody Beats the Wiz. credit card gives you something other credit cards don't. Only the Discover card offers you cash back bonus award. Cash. Over half a billion dollars paid so far. And there's no annual fee. 
So carry the Discover card and improve your cash flow. It pays to discover. Accept it wherever you see the Novus Network sign. O can be one-on-one, -on -one, or O can be two. O is what holds companions together. O is the Olympus Dallas Zoom, a weatherproof compact camera with two times power zoom. At Nobody Beats the Wiz, you'll find all the Olympus cameras and accessories, like the Olympus IS-3 Zoom Lens Reflex Camera that zooms from telephoto to wide angle in pin-sharp focus. With Olympus and Nobody Beats the Wiz, you'll never miss another O. In the years to come, thousands of people will be protected because of a significant innovation from Volvo. Volvo introduces the world's first side impact bag. Drive safely. Bob Papa back in the Sports Authority Game Time Studios. Two minutes until face-off after period one. Ranger highlights from the Garden. We'll check in on the Knicks. But now we check in with the Hockey Maven and Boom Boom. Take it away, Stan. Uh, Patrick Roy got bombed twice. Everybody wondering, uh, should he start or not? And if you were the coach of the Canadians, would you start Roy or Ron Tucknut? I put Roy right back in the net. He Why? gets paid to stop the puck. He didn't even have to stop. Sit, shot yesterday. And as a matter of fact, why blaming the goaltender? 51 shot. What was the rest of the team? Having a hot dog? <laughs> I mean, uh, how can they do that? Roy now is going to my lose confidence. They don't play until next Saturday or Friday. Now, I'm glad for the kid. I hope the kid does well. I doubt it very much. Okay, it's going to be talking about Jags. Yeah, it is, Dan. And here's our starting goaltender matchup for starter. 27-year-old, his fifth appearance. There's his record on the year, 1-0-1. Oh, his last start was February the 23rd. That was a 5-2 win over Florida. Tommy Soderstrom has played every minute against the Canadians in the Islander Nets this season. Game under 500 and a 2.54 goals against average. He'll be backed up by Jamie McLennan. Of course, Patrick Waugh the backup goaltender for Montreal tonight. Paul Dvorsky, the referee. He's referee number 10. Linesmen are Gord Brossaker and Kevin Collins. Canadians in the traditional blue blanc rouge uniforms are to the left and the Islanders to the right. I have a quick trivia question for you, Jake. When's the last time you saw three officials, none of them, with a helmet on? Well, it's been a while, hasn't it? <laughs> I'll tell you, immediately, Jacques Demers, the Canadian's coach, has changed, getting the recce line off the ice. Well, the Islanders come through the middle. Ray Ferraro handling the puck. Got checked in the play by Racine King with one that went wide on a backhander. Shot right off the pad by the Montreal defenseman. Just lifted it right at Tugnut from no more than five, six feet. They must be very nervous, Jigs. They're talking about it now. Wow, Tugnut holding the edge of the goal. His own defenseman fires the puck at him. Good move here as Ray Ferrero charged through. Derek King mishandled the puck here. Did not get a shot away, but there's the puck. They tried to clear it behind the net. They shot it at the goaltender. It may have been Di Pietro. I think it was the forward coming back. I pointed the finger at the defense, but I think it was the center iceman on this line. Di Pietro it has the puck here and then lays it to the left side off Oleg Petra. With Luongo back for the Islanders. Up the left wing board toward Derek King. Held in by the Canadians. They set up the point band. Popovic and his shot hit Ferraro's stick. Bounces to the blue line and dumped in wide to Tommy Soderstrom. De Pietro puts it back in the net. Molotov up the left wing board. Ferraro can't get it out of there. This is Petrov turning for the Canadians. Long shot from the point. Here to side by Soderstrom. And brought down the left wing boards and cleared out by Vladimir Molotov. The Canadians have shot it right back in and they'll go for a player change. That's Chris Luongo with the outlet toward Jerry King. He lifts it down the boards and now the Islanders will get a chance to change up. The three free squads back for Montreal. He's number 43. Flushed from behind the net by Zygmunt Toffy. Three squads pass picked off by Turgeon. The Canadians covered quickly in their own zone and now they've cleared it out. But off Tom Cruz's stick. Picked up by Pulpy. Pulpy over the Montreal line, only to be checked. Here's Kirk Muller. Muller unable to get through center right cleanly. Pulpy has dumped the puck in. Taking the three squad. Tugnut left it back of the net. Comes around to the near side. Turgeon trying to center it. 
There's John, puts it up. Holtby shot is turned aside by Tugnut. This is Domfus. Into the middle, but the pass was a bad one. Intended for Mark Recchi. Dennis Vasky, the one constant on that list of defensemen that we showed you inside the game. He's playing here with Dean Shadows. As Muller gets into the Islander zone, the pass to Recchi put it in front. Tom Booth was well covered by Pulfey. Now it comes out in front again. Dean Shadows has taken his man down, and the first penalty of the game goes to the Islanders. First scoring opera, first scoring opportunity on Tommy Soderstrom. Off that same play, Dean Chanel. He knew he was going to get it. Looked at the referee, hoping that he wasn't going to see the signal. But it's got to be a holding penalty. Chuck Demir. I was asking the other night, I was watching the television. I said his hair looked a little orange. But then I remember saying something up in Montreal when we were up there. And yes, he has... We blamed the monitor, didn't yes. we? Yes. We yeah. thought maybe it was just just the television set, but it's not true. Saw him before the hockey game, and it does have a little different... Yeah, a little tinge there, or tint. That's something Lauren doesn't have to really get too concerned about. <laughs> well, it's true. I mean, just take a look. You don't know, need a replay. <laughs> Change it out for holding at the 208 mark. The Canadians who come into tonight's game. The power play that is ranked fourth on the road. And fifth overall in the National Hockey League. Get it out there against the Islanders. And they've got a Bure in the lineup. And he's got the puck right now. Larry Bure can't get around Luongo. Galgano shoots it down the ice. Got to tell you the Bure story when we get a chance. We're excited, I guess, about being called up. He didn't bring any equipment. Matthew Schneider moves the puck to the left side. Don Foose is offside, and we can tell you the whole story now. <laughs> Bure got the call. Conroy was sent back to their farm team at Fredericton, and uh, Bure just went to the airport, apparently bought his own ticket, got on the plane, just figured, well, you know, they'll look after getting the equipment there. Wrong. Had his skates in his hand? Yeah. yeah. Well, no, no, he didn't have anything. No, no, no he got here to uh, New Jersey yesterday afternoon, didn't have anything, <laughs> apparently. Uh, did find a hotel, there and then, then he, <laughs> and he is a youthful looking kid, isn't he? He looks like a choir boy, not a hockey player. <laughs> so excited to go to the arena, even though he didn't have any equipment, he left his wallet in the hotel room last night. <laughs> That's nervous. Oh, he, yeah, he's, uh, <laughs> he's got a bit of a problem, all right. They got him listed at 5'10". No, don't believe it. Oh, no. That's not even on the metric system. No. Flatley trying to dig the puck out of the corner, but Muller controls for Montreal. Got checked by Vasky. Snyder covering the left point. Leads it back to Racine. Centered one, but well wide of anybody in a red, white, and blue uniform. So Benoit Ho gets to the puck and clears it off. Snyder's stick covering the blue line. 45 seconds remaining in this Montreal power play. Schneider hard around the boards. That'll skip to the far side and away from Domfus and away from Schneider momentarily. He's Racine with a pass here. Off Domfus and offside as well at the Islander blue line. Clock is down to 31 seconds in the penalty against Chenault. Well, the wrecking ball. I suppose he's one of the few players that they look to on the Montreal team that is playing somewhere near the capability that he possesses. Recky is leading the team in scoring right now. He has six goals. He leads them in goals as well. Nine assists, 15 points, although he's a minus 11. Mm. Erjan at center ice for the Islanders. Bure is on the right side with Savage in the middle. And across the line handling the puck here is Brune, the other forward for Montreal. Brune tied up with Molotov. Erjan trying to fly it off the board. Molotov got to it, gets it to Erjan, who's out of there with Marty McGinnis over on the right side. They crisscross. Herjohn picked up by Brisbane. Now Herjohn nudges it out in front, but it goes right to number 18, Larry Bure. Bure with a lot of skating skills. Good puck handling, they tell me, but he got checked at center ice. This is McGinnis. Marty McGinnis dumps it in, and the Islanders are in the middle of the player change here. Travis Green has come out with Steve Thomas and Benoit Ho. The Canadians defenseman Lyle Odeline works from back of his own goal. Seemed to get crossed up a little with Bure. Now Odeline starts out with a feed to the left wing board. Beers stepped up to make connection with his man. Now he makes connection with the puck and the pass went to Green to hold all the way through. Thomas with a shot that hit the side of the net. Got back by the Canadians. Donald Brassier down the left side has dumped it in. 
Maskey back on it. Puts it away from Ed Ronan. Maskey got thumped solidly by Brazier, and the puck is going deep into the Montreal end. No icing to be called. And here Popovic from back in the net. Popovic trying to play it out of there. Does come to center ice, handled by Beers, and wearing number two. The Maskey and then to hold. Apparently not off his six, so we're going to get an icing call against the New York Auditors. We played just over five minutes Ladies of the first period. Time, an opportunity to check in on the Moldell scoreboard. We've had four shots, but none of them have found the twine back of these respective goaltenders. People around here know a great snow vehicle when they see one. That's why they're going to their GMC truck dealers, where they'll find this amazing snow vehicle with four-wheel anti-lock brakes, enhanced V6 engine, and available push-button four-wheel drive. So, of all the vehicles you can have fun with this winter, don't forget GMC Jimmy. After all, you gotta get back up the hill somehow. See your tri-state GMC truck dealer today. Dedication. Drama. Danger. Experience life on a lethal floating city with access you won't believe and action only the Discovery Channel can bring. Don't miss Carrier, Fortress at Sea, narrated by Martin Sheen. Premiering Sunday at 9 Eastern and Pacific on the Discovery Channel. Explore your world. That's a record in itself. The only under defenseman to play in all 19 games this season. But that is head hammered here as he... Donald Brashear, who got his head down, trying to control the puck, and wham, Brashear is a big guy, big and strong. The faceoff will be to the left of Islander goaltender Tommy Soderstrom. Canadians won the draw from Terzot, and Popovic throws it to J.J. Daniel. Daniel centers right across the front of the net. Popovic carries it back to the goal, tries to come out on the backhand, shifts to the forehand, and that is shot block. Nick Dakota moves it on toward Brad Delgarno. Delgarno with Terzon pulling to the left side. Delgarno can't get his, get his shot through. And Ronan moves over center and on into the Islander zone. Dropped it back. McClam with a long backhand shot that's right into the catching glove of Soderstrom. Janelle and Brazier. Brazier and Vakota staring at one another. An indication from Vakota's, I'll take him, but the linesman decide that they've had enough. And they both head for their respective benches. A lot of conversation. There's Donald Brashear. Better look at him than the night that he scored the overtime goal against the Islanders. Off the cheekbone of Scott Lachance. February 20th. <laughs> Made a date with somebody on the, the bench, I think. See yeah. you later. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I probably got a date with either Chanel or probably in all... Likelihood, Mick Vakota, as you see, been talking about it now. So I don't know whether I'll bring an engagement ring for this <laughs> or not. Dave <but laughs> Pietro centering for Petrov and Keane for Montreal. They're out against Gary King, Patrick Flatley, and Ray Ferraro for the Islanders. That's Ferraro into the Montreal zone, only to be checked. And back to the puck is Gord Denis. Cross ice, Bob Beers moves it towards Flatley. It went off his stick, and Matthew Schneider will chase it down for Montreal. Well, right here is the DiPietro at center ice. Keen is quick, and DiPietro's shot was blocked. Gord Deneen. Not able to move the puck out. Beers over to help out. Gave it away. DiPietro centers, and Potterstrom makes the save off Keen. Lastly, pass is too far for Ferraro. Over the line at center. The Schneider right back up the middle. The Canadians moving into the Islanders' home. Beers reached back and got the puck out of there. Malcolm right back to the blue line again. Gord Deneen over to lay a hit on DiPietro. And Bob Beers moves the puck to Captain Patrick Flatley. Then to Ferraro. Quickly, four Canadians get back, and Ferraro dumps it in from center ice. The four check. Moved behind the net by Petroff of Montreal. Schneider up the middle with a pass toward Muller that was tipped and controlled by Luongo. Then to Molokov, who's played it hard around. Ever goes Thomas, took it in his skates. On to McGinnis. He draws the crowd. McGinnis protecting the puck, got it back to the stick, gave it to Thomas, out of the corner, centers, it didn't get through to Green, who was waiting for it. And the Canadians read it, and the Islanders have to go back. Luongo's pass, blocked by Muller, brought in across the line, offside. 
Still 12 minutes and 50 seconds remaining in the opening period. Six shots each, nothing, nothing, the Motel scoreboard. The new Saab 900. It won Automobile Magazine's Design of the Year. Consumers Digest rated it a best buy. Kiplinger's Personal Finance Magazine called it the best new car in its class. But with a 50% stiffer body, a new 900 is designed to survive much more than the scrutiny of the press. Lease a 900S for only $2.99 a month. See your Saab dealer for details. Want all the latest breaking baseball news? Sports Channel's got it. From striking players to replacement players, from the front office to the diamond, it's on Sports Channel. Join Fran Healy from Florida for the Mets Spring Training Report, Friday at 10.30, only on Sports Channel. Now's the time to taste the future of draft beer. Ice draft from Budweiser. It's ice brewed, then cold filtered. New ice draft. Ancient out, and Dennis Faske on defense for the Islanders with the forward line of Thomas on right wing, Green in the middle, and McGinnis on the left. There is no score. We went to commercial and took a look at the Modell scoreboard. I mentioned uh, half a dozen shots each, divided by two. It's three apiece and a total of six. Canadians into the center ice area. That's Brian Savage with a big hit thrown by Chenault after he played the puck. And around the board. Travis Green gets it out with a long pass to Thomas. Two, now three Canadians back. Green moves over the line offside. Thomas thought he had held it, timed it well, but the linesman said it wasn't so. Well, he had a couple of defensemen standing up on the blue line, so Thomas had to hold up and wait for somebody to move down the left side. There's Brian Savage. It returned after being hit by, yes, Darius Kasparaitis. You'll remember that wonderful hit that he laid on Savage. Savage was in the act of shooting a puck. And uh, here's Dean Chanel, something that the Islanders lack when he's not in the lineup. Rich Pilon is not in the lineup. They need his hits as well. But Savage, of course, took that hit from Kasparaitis and missed about, what, four or five games. Yeah. I think if I were Brian Savage, I tightened up the chin strap just a little, the way that helmet came rolling down over his eyes after the hit from Chenault. Or Denis moves the puck to the left wing boards in his own zone. Loney gave it away. Mark Wecky dumps it in deeper. But back on it is Denis, Nard around towards Zygmunt Pulpy. Erjean goes to the puck, read it up, but the Canadians recover at the line, but a long shot was deflected off Soderstrom. And cleared out of there by Troy Loney. Pulpy stepped over the line. Shoots. That was deflected by Racine. And the Canadians coming out of their own zone. The Islanders in the middle of the player change. Antonin and Luongo on defense. The pass to Dom Booth. And he shot it wide of Tommy Soderstrom. Troy Loney chasing it with Recky. And again it's given away. Breezeball shot from the line. is blocked. Loose in front. The Canadians were there and... Unable to handle it. Mark Recchi and Loney get tied up back in the net. This is Vincent Dompus. Dompus turning off the boards. Gave it to Muller. Trying to walk out of the corner. Deneen is all over him. Muller one-handed. Can't get the shot on goal. Luongo kicks the puck loose for Zygmunt Palfi. Turgeon heads up the middle. It's floated out of there, but Turgeon couldn't wait for it. It's offside. It's worth the gamble. Halfie saw him heading out of the end, couldn't get a good handle on the puck immediately. Turgeon has to hold up. If he holds up too long, Montreal Canadiens have him. Um, went one way, the puck went the other. He made the save anyway. There's the deflection. He's in the right position. Troy Loney with some close coverage. And then Palfi grabbed the puck. He sees Turgeon heading out of the end. Didn't get enough on it. He was too slow. Turgeon well ahead of the red line. Offside. So the faceoff comes back to the right of Tommy Soderstrom. Draw one by the Canadian. Schneider teed it up in a blocking glove save by Soderstrom. That's off. Is there trying to play it in deeper to DiPietro to Keane. Keane forced off balance. Centered, but King is there. On to Patrick Blackley. Blackley dumps it in. Got it in from his own side of center, but Tugnut will play it. Over goes Flatley. In deeper to King. King trying to get it off the boards. Ferraro is there. 
He and Flatley back in the net. Nobody out in front for the Islanders. King goes to the far corner for the puck. Gave it to Flatley. Ferraro there as well. Ferraro tried to come to the short side of the net. Couldn't do it. Flatley gives it to Ferraro. Walks in and scores! Office hours. Ray Ferraro, he's back in the office. That's where he loves to be. You can see him trying to bring the puck up from behind the net moments ago. They worked it down in the corner. Who else but Flatley with him. And then he just took a quick jump off of the skate. Boom, there he goes. Held Tugnut on that side and then backhanded it into the far side. One to nothing. Not often you see the Islanders getting the first goal of the game. Something like the third time. Second time this season. Take a look from overhead. You can see that he opened up an up net for that backhand shot with a quick move along the front of the goal tree. How about a one to nothing lead for the first time in five weeks? And now a fight. Mick Makota and Donald Brashear. Well, this will make some highlights real somewhere. <laughs> but Petrov, you're going to get a third man in there. <laughs> Even if you're just trying to help him out. <laughs> the challenge had been issued earlier and answered the next time they get on the ice together. Brash here has fast hands, Jake. He may not have them that quick when he's handling the puck, but with the mitts off, he has. Well, Dakota and Brashear take seats as we go to the ice surface area, check in with Stan and his guest, good old number five, Boom Boom. Well, Boomer, what did you think of that first goal and the way it was scored and the way it was played? Oh, uh, Stan, I thought it was a fantastic goal. I don't understand why a guy can come out of that corner without being touched, get in front of the net, take the goaltender, and let it go right on top. I thought it was a great, great, great goal. And the way the Islanders playing, you saw Montreal now, they're losing, they're losing their cool. This is what the Islanders want. Let the Montreal take the penalty. They're gonna get each one five minutes. It's gonna be five against five. The way the Islanders are skating and handle the puck, they're gonna be there all night. You know, it's very unusual for the Islanders to score the first goal. But very unusual. Is that right? Yes. Well, it's better to score the first goal. Not a much of it in. It's going to be wide open. Now they got to force the play. Now, I'm thinking what Savard is thinking right now. Jigs? <laughs> yeah, I wonder what Serge Savard is thinking right now. That's 14 goals to one. His team has been outscored in the last two games in a little bit. Immediately following the faceoff here, Jacques Hebert changes up his forward line. He's got Muller out there. With Dom Pus and now Mark Recchi replaces Gore. Trying to get the power on power again. I guess that's the way they want to play it. And the Islanders for the forward line of Terjan, Hogue, and Delgarno. Terjan stick handling into the Montreal ball where Brieswap broke up his rush. Delgarno gets to it. Can't center it. Ends up in the near corner and the Canadians try to bring it out. Plays the center ice for Recchi. Mark Recchi trying to cut inside. Muller had the stick knocked out of his hands by Brad Delgarno, so that wasn't going to work, was it? Here's Vladimir Molokov, number 92. Molokov up the middle as things opened up for him, then got checked. Races to the boards and knocks it away from Yves Racine. Molokov has to chase his hockey stick. The Canadians come to center, three on three at the Allender blue line. Recchi pulls up, looks for somebody to give it to, and it turned out to be Thomas. He's away to the races. Thomas trying to get away from Brisbois. Does, but then can't find the puck. Tugnut reaches out to cover and get a face off. What he needed was about another 10 feet. And he'd have been all by himself. Ladies and gentlemen. At a look at the Modell scoreboard. A rarity. Islanders won. All defenseman, he would have. And if he didn't, it would have been a penalty shot. Ooh. How exciting. He's on the right side with Marty McGinnis winning this faceoff. Dean Chanelf has got the pass and cut behind the Montreal goal, and Schneider gives it to Bure. Okay, over center ice. Up it off the board. Brune puts it right on, and the rebound was there for Bure. Back into his teammate, and that allowed Baskey to move the puck. 
Marty McGinnis overled Travis Green at center ice. The puck bouncing on Savage. Green can't get it into the Montreal zone, so the Islanders will go all the way back. Eight and a half minutes to play in this opening period. McGinnis off the left wing board. Up to Travis Green. Into the zone with a pass that was tipped. And brought back by Savage. And Savage pulling up momentarily on Beers and centered one that slipped away from Keen. Green all the way around towards Steve Thomas. He'll try a long breaking pass, and here's McGinnis over the Montreal line. Trying to cut inside, gets tripped up. No penalty call. And the Canadian, J.J. Daniel, controls it now with a pass to Keen. Knocks it back. Daniel rushes the puck over the line. Turned on near Turgeon and tucks it into the corner. Number two in the Islander uniform is Bob Beard. The engineer that he sent pairing. There's on with a feed to Zygmunt Coffey over the Montreal line. Coffey can't get around Daniel. Loney over to help. In deeper to Terjean. Back to Loney. Comes out in front. Testing Crudgut. And it's cleared away. Crudgut and Loney were teammates at the start of last season with the Mighty Ducks in Anaheim. Here's Keane with a long pass. It doesn't work. Loney has it for the Islanders. Looks to Coffey, who's streaking down the left side, then pulled up at the line as Loney dumped it in. Turgeon in after it, but Cut that played it away. This is Mike Keene up off the board, but right to Troy Loney. Coffey dumps it back to the Canadiens' goal. Just over seven minutes remaining in the opening period. Rayquois with an outlet to Muller. On shot is wide of the net. Patrick Flatley puts it on Molotov stick. Up around the board toward Ferraro. The line where Rayquois was covering. And the Canadians set up again at center ice. The first straight ball shoots it in hard. Rotterdam to leave it here for Luongo. Up toward King. First ball pinching it on him. Bolikov just flooded it out of the zone. Flatley finds Ferraro, but he missed him by about a foot. Ferraro went after a loose puck. Take it off the play. Back of the net and hauled down by Muller. Paul Dvorsky didn't see any infraction, so play goes on. Patrick Flatley gave it to Bolikov. Up to Ferraro into the clear. On comes King. His shot just wide of the net. Mark Lamb moves it out for Montreal. And it's shot down into the Islanders' zone by Recky. King took Recky's skate from beneath him. One time, shut out from back of the net. Jordan King just go watch out here. Rune in the Islanders' zone. Checked by Vasti. Get out. Gets to his man, forcing him to the corner. Handling it now. Benoit holds. It's going to be interesting to see what the next penalty is going to be. Mm-hmm. Let a couple of things go. And immediately, if he calls something now, the guys are going to jump all over him. Well, set a trim and then take it away. I don't mind, and I don't think the players mind as long as it's consistent. Snyder from the blue line. That bounced off the box blocking glove of Sonner's trim and came right back to him. Picked up here by Brad Delgarno. The Islanders with a one to nothing lead. And Wall Hogue has the puck. Hogue passes to Delgarno. Shoots from the blue line, and that bounced off the defenseman over the line. Doug Nutt gave it away back in the net. Terzon can't get around Schneider, however. Delgarno kicks it loose. Here's Hogue. Terzon to the front, the pass there, and he shot it wide. Hogue tries again, but that slips away from Delgarno. Couple of beautiful setups, but no finish. Bob Booth into the Islanders zone. Feeds it off to the left side. Recky walks in and his shot went wide. He actually intended the pass for Dom Booth. Benoit Hogue. Worse off the puck at the blue line. By Janine and an offside pass called against the Islanders. A little under five minutes to go in this first period. Scoring chances. The Islanders have had them. There's the play. Turgeon had to take it and escape. Still got a shot away while it was wide. And Montreal, Mark Recky. That was an intended pass. Never got to the stick. Now Lauren Henning with Travis Green at center ice. Here's Marty McGinnis on the left side and Steve Thomas over on the right. Malakoff and Luongo, the defense pairing. Number 22, Luongo, or Malakoff, I should say, has given it to Luongo and then right back to Vladimir. Lays it out through center. Well, the Canadians down by a one nothing count here at the Coliseum. Start out, and we apologize for loss of video. Montreal has just iced the puck. Luongo back to touch up and bring the face off back into the Montreal end. The Islander fans, 16-year-old and under, were invited to join the club, the Models New York Islanders Kids Club. Get a team pennant, button, bumper sticker, a personalized letter from Captain Patrick Flatley, and the team photo and newsletter. You'll get discounts on select merchandise. It's only $10.95 to join, 
Pick up an application at any Modell's sporting goods store in Nassau, Suffolk, and Queens, or at the Nassau Coliseum. The Modell's Islanders Kids Club. Gotta go to Moe's. One of the reasons the Islanders have had the better scoring opportunities, they're skating better. And when they're skating better, they're passing better. They cover their positions and their men much better. Have a screen on this draw. One by the Islanders. McGinnis gives it to Molikoff. Moves in about three steps. Centered toward Thomas, who turns only to have his shot tipped. Travis Green gets to it. So pushed off the puck. McGinnis went to it. Couldn't handle it, however. So the Canadians cleared out, and Molikoff steps in front of Ronan, allowing Luongo to go for the puck. Up to Thomas. Thomas is checked at center ice. Brazier drops it back. The Canadians over the line, but Ronan's centering attempt didn't get through Luongo. Here's Ronan with it again. And Ronan centers a drive. It's blocked by Molikoff. Donald Brazier and Molikoff go to the board. A kick loose. Luongo battling Lamb on the end board. Lamb plays it toward the corner and gets to it. Tried to feed Brazier, but Green is there. Moves it on to Steve Thomas. His pass is behind Marty McGinnis in the center right zone. The Canadians went back, and the Islanders made a player change. Then Ronan up quickly in the near side, and the backhander by Brazier is grabbed. Out of the net to play it is Hunterstrom on to King. Larry King to Ray Ferraro. Three on three at the Montreal line, and Ferraro is checked. Flatley dropped it to Vasky. Right back to Flatley. The King off the left side. Ferraro with him. King's drive is turned aside by Tugna. Not played around the boards and drawn out by Kirk Muller of Montreal. Quick crossing at center. Dompus into the zone. Vasky had his stick held, and there's going to be a penalty on the play. And the call will be on Vincent Dompus of Montreal for holding more than one stick. Dompus is having an awful time. This season so far, he has not been anything close to his ability. Now he gets a penalty for holding onto a stick. It was interesting that it turned out to be this penalty that they finally called. Islanders squeeze the Montreal player out there. That's down post. He's still got a hold. Good play by Vasky. That's alert. That's a smart play. Go for the puck. Make a move with it with your hand because you can do that in the defensive zone. Word filtering down that Ray Ferraro's goal, the one that has made it one to nothing, was his 105th as a New York Islander, which ties the man who originally wore uniform 18. Boy, it took him a long time to <laughs> catch you. It sure did, yeah. Jock <laughs> giving the gum quite a working over there, isn't he, as the Islanders get ready for their first power play of the night. Numbers on the Islander power play and the Montreal penalty killing, 11th as you see. The Islander power play at its exact 20% ratio is ninth best in the 2016 league. Here Terjean with a feed to Molokov. On the board, Oak takes it here in the left side. A little trouble with it. The Canadians don't get it out initially. Beers and Molokov on the point. Paul B, Terjean and Hulk up front. And the puck is played over Bob Deer's head. Vladimir Molotov will come back. Molotov turns as he looked up and saw the forechecking of Mark Lamb coming at him. This is Beers on to Terjean. Terjean across the line, cutting to the right, holds the puck at the point. Now gets it to Molotov, it rolled off his stick. Molotov has it now on the pulpy. Back to Molotov. Zygmunt Palfi gets it teed up, set it across, and Beers' drive went wide. Boy, got a lot on that quickly, didn't he? Good shot, Giggs. His timing was good. Good timed shot. Well timed, I should say. Bob Beers, everybody watching, see how he fits in here. His offensive skills. Take a look as they try to set it up. Palfi, Molokov looks back to Palfi. There's the pass, and there's the shot. Went off the outside of the net, up into the seats. That brings the face off. That's the reason he's mad, one, that he didn't put his first chance in the net. Secondly, face off comes out, but good shot by Bob Beers. One second, less than a minute. Remaining in the power play. Played for the Boston Bruins, the Tampa Bay Lightning. Most recently, the Edmonton Oilers and the natives of Pittsburgh. This is Vasky down the left side for the Islanders. 
got bumped by Racine as he dumped the puck across the line, and Kirk Muller duped it the length of the ice. Tommy Soderstrom to hold it up. On to Vladimir Molokov and around to Vasky. Vasky with a pass to Molokov. King, Flatley, and Ferraro up in the center ice zone. Ferraro into the Montreal territory. Can't get it to King. Vasky pinches in. Knocks it away from Muller. Muller without a stick. Trying to kick the puck loose. Did, but it went right to Flatley, then to Ferraro, and now to King. Larry King out of the corner. Leads it back toward Dennis Vasky. Let's one fly. That just missed the net. Here's Molokov over on the far side of the ice. Into the corner to King. To Flatley. Flatley. That's up Ferraro. Up to Molokov. Shoots from the blue line. Up high on Sutton. And the teams are at full strength again. The only shot the Islanders had. And it came after the penalty box had empty. Rob Foos is dumped solidly by Vasky. Rob Foos back at his gate. Puts it in front. It's off the boards and centered back but away from Schneider covering the left point. We're into the last bit of the play in the opening period. Schneider with a pass to Domfus on the right side. They gave it away, but up they come. Here's Lamb moving in. Holds it and can't get it around Soderstrom. Big chance for Montreal that went astray. Canadians setting up again in the outer zone. Domfus to Lamb. Up to Brunei and it didn't make connection. This is Steve Thomas. Out to Marty McGinnis. He's over the Montreal blue line. The pass toward Thomas was hit. Thomas and Schneider end up on the boards. And now Brunei shot it off Steve Thomas. That's cleared out by the Canadians. And Ford Deneen goes back to handle it. We have five seconds left in the period. Seven consecutive periods in which the Canadians have managed a total of one goal. And the Islanders get one in the first period, a rarity in itself. They didn't get that many opportunities, but when the Islanders did get it, Ray Ferrero put it away. Good period for the Islanders. Good skating period. Some hits, some good passing, good positional play. Doesn't matter where, at home. And then it's welcome home for a, an old pal, Gordy Deneen, who is plucking a gap on the defense and uh, doing it very well, I might add. Uh, how does it feel to be back? Oh, it's great to be back. Uh, you know, you always have something in your heart from your first team, and uh, to be able to come back and, and join the team that I was first drafted by and played for, uh, it's a big thrill for me. Now, you've had a lot of experience. You come into a situation like this. What does the defense uh, coach, uh, Rick Green, what does he expect from you? What do they, what do they tell you? Well, I, I think they know what I can do after 13 years of pro hockey. I'm pretty much... Uh, at home type defense when I move the puck and uh, hopefully uh, just keep a steady and influence back on defense, uh, not make too many mistakes. And, uh, you know, I think they know what uh, I bring to the game every night. After all these years, I just found out that his nickname is Hendo. <laughs> How did you become a Hendo? Well, uh, we had two Gordos on the, on the team when I first came here, Gordy Lane and I. And, uh, Gordy and I got tired of turning our heads every time somebody said Gordo, so uh, he tagged me with it. I have no idea where he pulled that out of, but he uh, says, you're Hendo from here on out, and that's what I've been. A very, very hungry Montreal Canadiens team. It's no secret, the uh, last two games, they got beat bad. What do you see in them, and what do you think you have to do in the next two periods to beat them? Well, they, they pretty well bring the same thing to the table every night. They work hard, and uh, they're a really strong defensive team, and uh, you know, I think it really helped us to go out and get the first goal and get the lead, and uh, hopefully they'll try and open it up and uh, we can get some more opportunities from them. Tommy Soderstrom, uh, interesting type of goalie. Uh, I can't quite define his style. Maybe you can define it for me. Well, it's funny. Uh, you know, I, I've been playing in Denver for the last uh, four months, and uh, Tommy Salo, another Swedish goaltender, is down there, and they have similar styles there. Uh, they really follow the puck closely and, uh, and uh, you know, they, they get down and cover a lot of the net and uh, they don't give up too many rebounds. And I don't know what the mystery is, but they sure keep it in the puck out of the net. Gordy, good to see you again. Hope you're around for a long, long time. Garden, the Panthers have never won there, and Mike Richter tried to keep it that way. First period, Rangers physical play. Kevin Lowe rides Jody Hull into the boards. Then Jeff Bukaboom on Jeff Lindsay. Bukaboom again on Lindsay. Hard hitting period number one at Madison Square Garden. And there is no score after one period of play. Rangers with 14 shots on John Van Beesbrook. Meanwhile, at the Ottawa Civic Center, first period, Senators work the puck around the boards. Carry Huffman the shot. Troy Murray deflects it in. Ottawa with a 1-0 lead shortly after. Hartford with the pressure on Don Beaupre. 
Darren Turcott around the net for the wraparound. Game tied at one. Jeff Sanderson has scored his ninth goal this season. And right now the Whalers with a 3-2 lead over Ottawa after one period. The Islanders play Washington later this week. Philadelphia leads the Capitals 1-0 in period number one. Elsewhere in the National Hockey League, an 8.30 start. Dallas and Winnipeg at 9.30. Edmonton squares off against Calgary. 10.30, San Jose and Vancouver and Chicago and Los Angeles. The big game in the NBA tonight is in Orlando as the Magic are playing host to the Knickerbockers as we take a look at the scoreboard. First quarter, Orlando with an 18-16 lead over the Knicks. Shaquille O'Neal back in the lineup after his one-game suspension. We'll have Knicks highlights on the post game. When we come back, did Jeanette have first period stats and highlights? The Islanders with a 1-0 lead over the Canadians after one period of play. There we go as Jiggs and Ed rejoin us with first period stats and highlights. Take it away, Jiggs. All right, Bob, we're going to get right to the scoring summary, which will show Ray Ferraro getting the only goal of the game thus far. His 11th of the season with assist to Flatley and King coming at the 9.44 mark. Montreal didn't get a shot on goal when they had the bad advantage. The Islanders uh, had a power play later in the period and uh, don't get anything going on that. But here's where they do get it going, and we get it going for you for your Jeep Eagle dealers. Good work down low. Ray Ferrero, Flatley, King, all in motion, and then Ray Ferrero takes the pass here from Flatley. Held Tugnut until he was able to go to the backhand. Well, Ferraro, goal number 11. Here's another look at it. That was Ray Ferrero. That's Flatley down there using his feet, stick, whatever. And then that nice little backhand by Ray Ferrero. The goal at 9.44, and the New York Islanders have a one to nothing lead over the Montreal Canadiens. The Canadiens had some chances of their own in the period, however. Sometimes dumping the puck in, a lot of people say, why do you do that? Well, if you do it right, and it comes off the backboard in the right position, you get that kind of a play at the net, like having a man standing down there. And Bure tried to tee up a rebound. It didn't work. one nothing Islanders. That is non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Islanders and Sports Channel is prohibited. The only goal in the game scored by that man, Islanders number 20, Ray Ferraro. He's ready to take the face off against Kirk Muller of Montreal. Racky to the right, Dom Foose to the left of Muller. Ferraro is flanked by King on the left side, flatly on the right. That's Derek King getting into the Montreal zone, and his centering pass went off his stick. Brisebois on to Muller, to Domfus. Muller moves in, Domfus fired one high, that comes bouncing off the glass, but stays in the zone, so Molotov cleared it. This is Patrick Flatley, got the back, Gary King went to the puck, can't beat it to Molotov, who had jumped in. The Canadians, Mark Recchi leads the rush into the outer zone, dropped it back, Molotov lifted the mad stick, but couldn't control it, and then Brisebois brought it right back to where Molotov had gone, and went very quickly to that spot. Ray Ferraro with one that's up high and grabbed. A little flip shot. I guess a test shot for Ron Tuckett. Something that I was watching for in the first period. Of course, we got to see Ray Ferraro score a goal. Doc Demir. Wow, keep it going. Yes, yeah, skate, work hard. Don't tear your sweater, boys. But I was watching Molokov, Jake. He seems to be into this hockey game. He carried the puck a lot. He was up and down. He was using his skating ability that so often he doesn't use. But he used it in the first period, and he's used it. Have a screen in the middle with Steve Thomas and Marty McGinnis on the wing. J.J. Daniel moves the puck toward Petrot. And has got a chunk of him, and Baskey comes over. Racing around the boards in his own zone. Out by Popovic, shoot from the... Appearance penalty is called. Dean Chanaus goes to the penalty box on that signal from Paul Dvorsky. Islanders make a mistake, but they don't have to pay the big price. Soderstrom comes up with a nice stop. Watch his feet. It looked awkward. He made the save, though, and here the Islanders leave the front of the net open. Boom, both feet moving forward. Kicks out a beautiful rebound. The Islanders are able to get a hold of it, but bound by the net on Di Pietro, a penalty. There's the backhand shot, the kicking save. Di Pietro gets his helmet knocked off, held up by Dean Chanel. Second power play of the night for the Montreal Canadiens, both as a result of penalties to Chanel. Muller centers for Recchi and Domfus, while the Islanders have McGinnis and Turgeon as the penalty killing forward. 
It's Matthew Schneider playing it around the board. Taken by Vincent Domfus. Looked to Racine at the blue line, but elected not to give it to him. Recky now centers, and that's picked out of the air and brought back by Pierre Turgeon. Turgeon dives it deep into the Montreal zone. Racine goes back in the net for it. Racine pulled back from McGinnis. Works it on to Matthew Schneider. To Kirk Muller. Muller taken to the boards there with Luongo on him. Schneider in deep is headed back to Muller. To the point. Nobody there. Schneider, the defenseman who normally would be there, was the one who had given Muller the puck. That's communication, Jig. That's why players should be talking to each other. They should yell to each other so that they know where we are. Mark Recchi swings to the right side. Racine dumps it into the corner. Muller with it back of the net. Taken off the puck. It's played up off the glass by Paskey. Canadians able to hold it in. Tom Bruce to Schneider. His shot is a quick save. And a beaut off the pads of Tommy Soderstrom. McGinnis lays it down the ice. That's two fine stops by Tommy Soderstrom. Here's Avery Avery Singh clearing the zone, but Flatley is back and has given it to Dennis Vasky. Got that in off Racine. The crowd chanting Tommy, Tommy. A sign of affection. Flatley is knocked down away from the puck, and Matthew Schneider is being sentenced for interference. Often we've talked, and I have said, the Islanders are not playing a smart hockey game. Matt Snyder is not playing a smart hockey game for the Montreal Canadiens. A chopping cross-check there. Boom. I guess it was more of a push from behind. You wouldn't get a penalty for that if you were at even strength. Here's the shot by Snyder a moment ago. Matt Snyder with a beautiful shot. Good kicking save by Tommy Salo. Tommy Salo, sure. Tommy Soderstrom still talking about and thinking about Tommy Salo, who is, I guess, the International Hockey League Player of the Week. Yeah, up there with the Denver Grizzlies. And a 1.00 goals against average last week. In three games, was it? A great week, obviously. Third time this season that Tommy Salo has named the International Hockey League Player of the Week. We've got some four-on-four -four hockey for the next 23 seconds. Canadians have dumped it in. Derek King is back for it. Maskey fell as he went to the end boards, but it's moved on to Ray Ferraro. Back to Gord Deneen, who steps over center, puts it in the far corner. Ferraro after it, bumps Riefwa away from the puck. Headed back by the Islanders, but outside the line. Now Chanelk is released from the penalty box. The Islanders with the extra attacker. Ferraro's got the puck. Moves in, slides it to King, and tugs up, makes the stop. Gary King comes out in front, waiting for his teammates to make the changes here. Now he feeds it back, but away from Molotov. And Soderstrom is well out of the net to move it on to Vladimir Molotov. The Canadians changing up their penalty killer. J.J. Daniel clears the puck towards center. Bounces on Brune. A minute remaining in the penalty time against Matt Schneider. To Bigman Coffey. Up ahead to Thomas, who is checked. Coffey steps over the line. Gave it right back to Thomas. To Molikoff. Into Thomas. E. Thomas. Deeper to Turgeon, who comes out of the corner. To Thomas at the side of the net. Back the way. Center. Coffey's got it. Bigman Coffey sets up the point man. Bob Beers. Back into the corner. Coffey has it now. Making the move, the puck does. Terzon gets choked off in front, and up comes Daniel. On to Brune. Brune across the line, Lamb to the front of the net. Brune's pass is blocked by Molikoff, who chases it. And races down the left wing board through center ice. Across the Montreal line. Terzon handles it. The pass into Pulpe. Straight across the front of the net with that play. Vincent Dobson forces the Canadians. And the Islanders, I should say, all the way back as he gets the Canadians out of trouble. And it also kills off the penalty to Schneider. Two shots on goal on the power play for the Islanders. But still a one to nothing game. Serjan has dumped it in from center right. Not, not holding it up. Both teams have finished their player changes. Butler's relay to Domfus missed him. Grisbois back in the Montreal defense. Give it to Racine. It turns right back to Grisbois. That's the right side where Mark Recchi dumps it into the outer zone. Leaves it out using the boards. Moves it through Marty McGinnis as it turns out. Daniel drops back with Green moving in. Daniel to Muller. It's Muller. 
Nick Hadling through the center ice zone. Slips it in from the Islanders' blue line. Patterson to play it here to the corner for Benoit Hogue. Hogue lifts it up the boards. He's held in the zone by Popovic and will be brought outside the blue line. 92, Vladimir Molotov. Well, just when I get to saying that, Bob Beers breaks them up. And he gets the tenors over with the bases, or away from the bases, or whatever. Get the choir boy set up there. one nothing. Islanders leading the Canadians. Play at the Islander blue line. Popovic slams it in deep. And all the way around toward Mike Keane. Looks it deeper to the corner. Keane should out with Oliver Petrov, and that freed the puck for Thomas. Back to Vasky, who comes to center, and dumps it in well wide of Ron Tugnut. Tugnut decides to cover it as he saw Thomas racing in. And some jostling, Daniel and Thomas. Nothing too serious developing here. Four-game road trip for Montreal that started last night in New Jersey with a 6-1 to one loss. Goes to Washington for a game on Saturday and one in Buffalo on Sunday. And they stay out on the road for the entire duration. One guy that's uh, accepting it but not happy about it is Pat Schneider. There's the puck dumped in. Tugnut looked back and he saw Thomas on top of him quickly. Held the puck and see the pushing and shoving. Daniel, Steve, Thomas. Sending messages, signs and signals in a hockey game. You can finish up why Thomas, or I'm sorry, why uh, Schneider isn't happy about staying away on the road. He's got a three-week-old baby boy at home. And he admits that he'll get more sleep. Being with the team away from Montreal, he, he misses the little guy and all the things that go on in the early stages of life. See Daniel just dart to the bench, Jiggs. When players are not happy with the way things are going, you see them do that. Some players break out of the pack. They just come on the ice. That was a very quick shift for Daniel. And he just raced off the ice. Kind of a signal he sends to the coaching staff, like, yeah, I'm really tired, so I'm dragging myself off the ice. There's Matt Snyder, a new father. Justin Schneider, the lad's name. Ferraro is up with Flatley and King. Alakoff and Luongo on defense. The Muller line. Muller, Dom Fusum, Racky for Montreal. Patrick Flatley plays it back in the net. Ron Tugnut moves it to the left side for Dom On to Kirk Muller. Flatley throws him up a little. Muller centers it back, but too far for Oda line. And lets it go now. Tucked down in front by Soderstrom. Luongo was quick to clear it for Flatley. On to Ferraro. Two on two at the Montreal line. Ferraro cutting to the left side. Back to Malakoff. Shoots just wide. Gary King keys up the rebound. The plate is behind the net. Over goes Petrov for the Canadian. Di Pietro. Gary King got a piece of him. All the line with the puck at the outer blue line. Flatley stick came up in his face. And all the line is down on the deck. Flatley just reached for his helmet like, oh no, what have I done? Purely an accident. You can tell by the way Flatley reacted. Caught him up high. Wait and see, I suppose. That's, this is the question I suppose. When you're talking about having something to talk about when you're a general manager and you're in Palm Springs and I suppose if it's raining and you can't play golf, there's one of the areas they might be able to improve on. Yeah, okay, he caught him with a stick. You're supposed to control your stick at all times. But then to take a look at Flatley, oh no. And what he's worried about is that if he cut him, he's gone from the hockey game. It's only a minor penalty on Flatley for a high sticking. Could have been much worse. Flatley two minutes for a high sticking. I would have lied now saying I'm bleeding. Look at this. <laughs> Ketchup doesn't do it. This, we're close to Hollywood, but we're not there yet. <laughs> Forget everything you've been told about cold filtered beer. Ice draft from Budweiser. It's ice brewed. Taste the future of draft beer. Montreal on the power play for the third time in this game. Muller centering for Dom Fuss and Recky. The Auditors using Terjean and McGinnis as their penalty killing forward. The Canadians win the draw. Snyder has the puck here. Set up Racine for a shot. That hit the man in front. Soderstrom watching it as it dropped in front of him, but Kirk Muller is getting up very slowly. Racine oh, catching the captain with that drive. Always a danger when you move to the front of the net. There's the shot. Ooh, it's a high one, too. 
Good stop. Look at Tommy Soderstrom. What a nice move to say square. Watch him say square to where the puck. Here's the puck coming in. Ooh, Kirk Muller ducking. There it is. Muller now heading off the ice. Good move by the goaltender, Tommy Soderstrom. He didn't get turned sideways. And an excellent move by linesman Kevin Collins. Muller went in, wanted to take the draw. Collins said, let me take a look. He went to, to Muller, lifted the helmet at the back and said, Kurt, you're cut. And he will leave with the Montreal Canadiens training staff here. He attended to in their dressing room. One of the things we were talking about on New Sports Talk the other evening, this, this game where bloodshed is part of it, and just a narrow shot like that and sticks, skates, the rest of it, we don't have the rules that the NBA does as far as looking after the players, taking them off the, the ice. OSHA has a rule, Ed, that if there's so much as a drop of blood on your uniform, that has to be changed. <laughs> it hasn't been attended to or addressed by the sleeve. Noted the Montreal trainer did have gloves on as he attended to Muller and then took him to the dressing room. And at 35, left in the penalty against Flatley. It's his non boost Outside pass. Looks all of his teammates, and Luongo dumps it in. Back up with it back to the net. And up right here goes to Schneider, and then right back to Reeves Racine. Tom Booth over on the right side, and Travis Green just knocks it away from him. Green and Delgarno are out to kill this penalty now for the Islanders. Schneider handling the puck. Left side to Vincent Domfus. Drops it back. Here's Schneider. Schneider weaves his way in deeper, but a penalty call. Montreal in control of the puck when referee Paul Dvorsky spotted an infraction committed by Di Pietro. Interference is the call by the referee. Power play, a little too anxious to try and create an opening, get a player into the scoring spot. Di Pietro, interference. Minute, minute, minute and one minute, second minute, left in the penalty minute, to Pat Flatley for high sticking. Canadians didn't get a shot on goal during that 59 second power play. Oh, so we'll get some four on four hockey again. Any team looking for a defenseman, a veteran defenseman, an experience who used to play for the Montreal Canadiens, maybe interested in knowing that Gerald Diddick and Gold is asked to be traded to the Canucks management uh, today, I understand, and said, it's time, get me out of here. He's had a problem in Montreal. Uh, they moved him on to Vancouver, where he's played well over the last several seasons. Keen up the middle with that feed. Savage got it into the Islanders zone. Gary King back in a battle here with Keen, and the puck ends up in the stick of Ferraro. No, Ferraro can't clear the zone. This is Keen. Great one now. Feeds the blue line, but well away from J.J. Daniel. And this Montreal club is just not hitting on any of the cylinders at the moment. They're not, Jake. And if you think back to the game in Montreal, both teams skated. The Islanders have been skating well in this hockey game, but Montreal have not. Canadians for the pass here toward Bracewell. It's picked off, and out comes Thomas on to Ferraro. Thomas drives over the line to the front of the net. The pass from Ferraro just missed. Lasky covers the left point. A delayed penalty called now. It's going to be. It's going to be to. Okay, we'll tell you after. <laughs> on the Modell scoreboard, one nothing Islanders over the Canadians. You and I see why. Okay, new rules. Individuals are no longer more important than the team. You want to that championship? Put it in here. Nobody can do it alone, but together we can do it. Sports magazines include more team photos. More game balls go to linemen. We all play more as a team. We pat someone on the butt when they fail and celebrate like madmen when they succeed. Starter, it's about team. Here comes Terjean over the blue line, and ooh, he's hauled down. As you Islander fans know, hooking is not tolerated in the NHL and is definitely not tolerated here. I'm sorry, Captain Hook. You'll be spending the next two minutes of your less than a last year professional hockey career in that standard. While the Islanders enjoy what I'm confident will be a very fruitful power play opportunity. Yeah! <laughs> oh. Oh. 
lot of people haven't figured out why Steve Thomas got goaltender interference. Watch the feet of Thomas. Ferrero has the puck. He's going to try and flip it through. Now watch what he does with his feet here. Boom. You see him drag his right foot, trip the goaltender, tug nut. That's what he got the penalty for. So Thomas has joined Flatley in the penalty box. Flatley has three seconds remaining in his high-sticking penalty. Then the teams will be back at four on four for a minute and two seconds. Following which, Montreal will have a power play, barring any more penalties. And the penalty of the night is interference. And goaltender interference. <laughs> First period, we had a holding penalty and a holding of the stick call. Holding two sticks. Two sticks, <laughs> yeah, for somebody else's or whatever it is. Vincent Domfus, joined by Larry Bure. Bure just skating into your picture, number 18 at the blue line. The puck ends up in the Montreal zone. Actually out of the penalty box, so it's four on four. Bure. Rizbaud drops it right back. This is Schneider. Schneider trying to drive around. Terjean is into the zone. Matt Schneider pulls up on Molokov, but he lost the puck. Bure puts it back in the net. Vincent Domfus. Lost it, and out of the zone comes Pierre Turgeon. Working on Schneider's side of the ice, cuts across on Racine, and then lets one go that missed the net. Bounce toward Domfus, up the boards too far for Schneider. Bure, for the Canadian, steps through the center ice zone. Didn't have anybody coming up with him, and now he's into the zone and knocked down. Big hit. Matthew Schneider, cross ice to Racine. And the Bure... Couldn't handle it the blue line. Luongo to play it now. Banks it off the boards and out. In five seconds, Montreal will go to the power play as DiPietro's penalty expires. Snyder off the boards from the left side to Racine. Played it through center. Down into the Islander zone. The clock will continue to run. Molokov plays it to the other end of the ice. The Islanders, remember, are shorthanded and they ice it now. Brazebois from behind the net. Just set it up. Gave it to Popovic. Up ahead to Recky to the Islander line where he's checked by Benoit Hogue. Brazebois with it at center ice. The Popovic here on the left side. Popovic dumps it in. Recky over on the far side. Centers right to Benoit Hogue. And the Islanders clear it out of there. 19 seconds left in the penalty to Steve Thomas. And a 1-0 hockey game on home ice. Favor of the Islanders. Top of it, hard around the boards. Recky goes to the far side of the ice to gain control of it. And checked by Del Garno. The puck is loose on the end board. Janow's hard around and out them all the way down. That'll just about do it, too, Jigs. And we haven't had a shot on goal now going back before the penalty to Flatley and then BTSO. Shots in this period are 3 3. Mike Keen into the Islander zone, only to be checked. Here's Brad Delgarno, Sandy McGinnis down the right side. Over the Montreal line, the pass is to Green. To traffic and right on Tugnut. Good screenshot set up by Travis Green and the Islanders. And it's still 1-0 as we check in with Stan Fischler. Thanks very much. I'm here with Boomer Jeffrey and Boomer. A much closer game than we thought it would be. What do you think the Islanders are going to have to do now to keep that lead? Well, the thing is, is uh, Stan, I thought Montreal was going to open more than that. They're playing men for men. But don't forget, Stan, the Islanders are playing very well. Every time that the Montreal Canadiens touch the puck, they have one Islander after him. And that's all they have to do to win this hockey game. They cannot let the Montreal Canadiens get loose at all. Thanks very much, Boom Jigs. Just jotting all of that down. Did you get any of that in? Ah, uh, yes. That there stuff that the Boomberg office? Yeah. Man-on-man -man coverage? Actually, when you think about it, Montreal is not in a bad position to be in playing on the road. Only mm -hmm. down by one. We're just a little more than halfway through the hockey game. Puck tied up in some skates on the far side of the ice. Flatley arrives and digs it loose. And gets it out of there. A cross ice pass to Ferraro. He shoots up high on Tugnut. King being bothered in front of the net. Jostling and whacking away with Lyle Odeline of all people. This is Keane for the Canadians. Two over the line. He looked up and Derry King was charging right at him. It's got a different Derry King and now Odeline punches Ray Ferraro. The referee's looking the other way and Odeline ends up on the ice. 
I'm going to tell you, Jake, I'll guarantee you that the referee deliberately looked away so that he wouldn't have to call a penalty on Ferrero. My legs and pulling my feet out, and I went down, and the referee was the closest player. There's Odeline with a shot. Whoa, should have had a penalty there. But the referee should have had another one there, but the referee deliberately turned his back. Didn't look, didn't want to look because he knew Ferrero was going to get even. <laughs> He's getting a kick out of it. Yeah. He's the game he <laughs> Well, the penalty boxes are empty. Teams at full and equal strength. The Islanders leading one to nothing, but the Canadians have the puck here. Rashir, who hasn't seen a shift, I don't believe, in this period. Handles the puck now as he goes back in the net. Centers, he comes out in front and is controlled by McGinnis. On to Steve Thomas, but just out of his reach. Thomas did touch it, now gets to it and shot it off the side of the net. This is Brashear on the left side, into the middle of the lamb, and it bounced on him. Lord Deneen dumps it into the Canadian zone. At least Grace Bois back here for the Canadians. Hard around the board, off Brashear. Here, nudges it toward center. It'll be picked up by Bob Beers for the Islanders. In the pass to Molotov, who's too far for Thomas. Lamb dumps it into the Islanders zone, and Recky races it after it. Lined up by Molotov, and the puck is loose for Green. Travis Green flips it up in the air. Bounces on Daniel. Both teams in the middle of some changes. Popovic on to Daniel. He's over the Islander blue line. Centers and a drive from Recky didn't get through. Green comes down the right side. The log go up to join him. Green has dumped it toward the far corner. And that's Benoit Hogue racing it after it. Down to that. Couldn't center it in front cleanly. Recky and Palfi battle in the corner. And here's Terzai. Cuts out of the corner and scores! Muller got a look at that goal, but he was standing down off the ice surface for Montreal go on and off. Herjar grabbed the puck in the far corner. Montreal didn't go to him. Then Walhold started the charge deep in Montreal's end. There's the checking of Paul P. Here's Herjar, he grabbed it. Recky couldn't get a stick on him, and he pulled it into the short side. Beautiful shot. By Terzaw. Watch, instead of going to the far side, he pulled on it and went short side. Tugnut had given him enough room. Eight on the season for Terzaw, and three of them against the Montreal Canadiens. In fact, three of his last four goals have been scored against Montreal. This is the final meeting of the regular season between these two teams, and the Canadians are offside. The Islander Blue Line. Terzaw scoring at 13 09. They turn that hair gray. We look at Inspector Clouseau, the coach of the Canadians, Jacques Demare. Important goal for the Islanders, Jake. Montreal looked like they were trying to get back in. They were... Rebound back towards... Back on it here is Kirk Muller. Lyle Odeline. Odeline dumps it in deep. Don Foos goes in after it. And Don Foos plays it off the back of the net. And right back to Don Foos. Out of the corner with a weak pass that didn't get to a teammate. Now who had been knocked off his gate. Moves the puck out and Odeline leaves it at center ice for Matt Snyder. Ferraro slows him up. Lassie plays it around Muller. Back on it now is Brunet. The Canadians try to set up at center ice and decide to dump it in and chase it. Soderstrom moves it for Vasky, hard around toward Patrick Flatley. Flatley with a long pass, is tipped from way up in the air, and bounces into the Montreal end of the ice. Great squad, Brune. Brune finds an opening, comes down the right side, Hogue got to him. They move across the line, this is Bure, centers, and a drive is blocked by Soderstrom, who read it well, came way out to challenge on that shooter. Nice team shot, bounces off Palfi. How about Palfi, too, getting in front of a shot, taking a run at one of the Montreal players? Indeed. And now the play called on an offside with a little less than five minutes to play in the second period. The crowd applauding the Islanders. They've changed the Modell scoreboard to zip now. <laughs>
looking for the most significant vehicle in the market. We weigh technological advancement, value, and performance. Introducing Chrysler Cirrus, Motor Trends Car of the Year. Chrysler Cirrus, it's not just a step above, it's the new plateau. A look at Gord Deneen, now the oldest Islander at 32. Played every game for the Denver Grizzlies. Coupled up here with Bob Beers as the defensive pairing. Nathan Coffey is up front with Benoit Hogue, and Pierre Turgeon is getting double duty at center ice. Turgeon pulls up, centers it across, couldn't get it to Coffey. The Canadians move out. Cross into the middle. Chris crossing at the Avalon line. Shoots a wide and Tommy Sauter's from set. Nathan Coffey to Pierre Turgeon. Backhand pass toward Hogue is picked off. And offside called against the Canadians. The Islanders come right back to work at the Nassau Coliseum on Thursday night. Ben, Ed, and myself will be back. Watch the Islanders from the Washington Capitals for you. Thursday at 7.30 with the Sports Authority Game Time Show beginning at 7 o'clock. Live and exclusive on Sports Channel. Always cool. Of course, he's aristocratic, we say, in the sense that Calm, cool, placid on the surface, but pedaling like that underneath. Mm -hmm. A little bit like a duck. I guess that's what you say. An aristocrat is like a duck. A lot like a duck, isn't it? <laughs> 19 games away from his 200th as the National Hockey League coach. It's Lauren Henning after tonight. His team is up 2 to nothing on home ice over the Canadians. Keane works the puck to the corner. Di Pietro back toward Keane. It got through to Soderstrom, who covers and gets a face-off. That's good move by Tommy Soderstrom. He could have unloaded it, but it would have been the wrong thing to do. A couple of Montreal players around. His teammates all had their back to him. That's not a good time to give them the puck. Steady as he goes. Each team with 13 shots on goal. See the numbers on Soderstrom, 2.12 goals against average. It's the last five starts. Two wins, a loss, and a tie, and the loss was in overtime at Montreal. All started at the back-to-back -back games against the New Jersey Devils before Montreal, then on to Buffalo. From the draw here, the Islanders move out. Steve Thomas is one-on-one -on -one against Odelai. Thomas. Right wing side to the corner. Centered the puck for McGinnis. Nice turn. McGinnis has to turn again as Schneider is hung right with him. And Ronan moves it up the boards. And this is Mark Lamb for Montreal. The wild over line. Thomas comes Lamb big time. Brashear off the left side. Shoots cutters from the face. Longo has kicked it loose. McGinnis plays it around toward the open corner. Chris Luongo gets to the puck. On to Steve Thomas. That is behind Green, so the Canadians come through center. Lamb gets it into the Islanders' zone. It's taken off the play by Malikoff, however. A party McGinnis using the right wing boards for Steve Thomas. Thomas with a pass to Malikoff. Back toward Ferraro. Chases it into the Montreal zone. Trying to get a step on Brazier. Center can't get it to Thomas, so Schneider cut through neatly. Schneider has it poked off his stick. Gary King pokes it off the stick again, but Schneider got back quickly for Montreal. Baskey out at center for the pass here to Chanel. Relay was hit by King. Brazier has broken Chanel's stick with a whack across the shaft of it. Right on the far side of the ice, developing here as Recky is back to the board. Lattley dug it out of his skates. The Canadians get to it. Racine with a shot. Sutterstrom, an awkward looking save, but it didn't get by him. Comes around to the far side. Breeze blocks. He's it up at the blue line. Let's one go that drifted wide. This is Patrick Flatley out of the zone. Ferraro up ahead. Chases it into the Montreal end. He's onside. Setters can't get it to King. Flatley puts it toward the corner. Great ball. On to Racine. Now the Montreal defense. Then up the left wing to Don Foose and on to Muller. Muller trying to work inside Beers. Gave it to Bracebois. Setters. A drive by Recky is blocked. Nice play by Gordon Ean. Beautiful play. What nice timing by Gordon Ean. Jake dropped down perfectly in front of that shot. A one-timer. Canadians again don't get through center ice. Turns on his check, however, as he came to the line, and Deneen has shot it in. 
Ure and Popovic on that far side for Montreal, but back comes Pierre Turgeon. In the puck to Gordon Dineen. Bob Beers. Beers pass, picked off by Bure. Loney slows it up, and then dumps it in well wide of Ron Tugda. Turgeon and Delgarno go into forecheck, but the Canadians move it out and come to center ice, led by Brunet. Brunet working on Luongo. Can't get around him, and Molotov cut across to clear that. This is Delgarno to Turgeon. Turgeon across the Montreal line offside with a minute and a half remaining in the period. Good pace in the hockey game. Montreal are now trying to keep up to the Islanders. Pierre Turgeon leading that rush. Good skating shift for the Islanders. Take a look at Turgeon. Here he comes. Starts to go lateral. You can see up on the top, Del Garno, I think it was, got across the line. Trying to get the back, the defenseman of Montreal to back up. Gordon Eden with some good move a moment ago. If he just dropped down, good sliding stop by Gordon Eden. Stack the pass. Look at Pavel Burry's younger brother, number 18. Larry Burry. E. Thomas for the Islanders. The Dean should out for the shot that went wide. Marty McGinnis in deeper. Here's Thomas going back to the net. Off balance as it turns out. Moves the puck. Travis Green off balance. And Daniel steps in behind the net. John Jacques Daniel through center. On to the left side for Brian Savage. And Sutterson kicked that shot. Well wide. McGinnis battling Savage as they drive back to the net. Savage leaves it. Sutterson the plane. It came right back in front. Cut to him, and he's got the catching glove down on top of the puck. He gambled and almost lost, but that's not the case. Both well, only counts, as you said before, round dancing, horseshoe pitching, and hand grenade throwing. I said all that? I think so, yeah. The other night in the hockey game, it was close. <laughs> Take another look at that. He gambled here a little bit. He rushed out of his net there and almost got stunned. But then again, Dennis Vasky was back there protecting. That's one of the things that the Islander defensemen have been doing so much better when Tommy Soderstrom is in the net. They know that he'll charge out. He wanders around out there. He makes saves, picks away a lot of rebounds. They have to learn how to cover, and they're learning. Inside the last minute of play of the second period, Tommy's inside the crossbar. Now moves out a little bit. Well up above the goal crease on the straw. Molotov moves the puck toward Gary King. Out of the zone, Ferraro chases. And it's shot back in by Schneider. Vladimir Molotov comes to the near corner. Can't move it out. Recky to Domfus who shot it wide. This is Gary King. Toward Ferraro with half a minute to go in the period. The Islanders checked in their own side of the, inside their own zone, I should say. And then Muller gave it away. Matt Schneider comes back away from our second intermission. Boom Boom Jeffrey on. Join Dan Fisher in our studio. Boomer, member of the Hockey Hall of Fame. This Muller's shot was deflected. Picked up here by Molikoff. Around to the right side and all the way down. And then let the time run out. Second period comes to a close. Another good period for the Islanders. Montreal, for a moment, looked as though they were going to get back into the game, but Pierre Turgeon, 13 13.09, put a stop to that. The Canadians have outshot the Islanders over 40 minutes tonight, but they haven't been able to get anything by Tommy Soderstrom. We could never get anything by Boom Boom Jeffrey on either. He's going to join Stan Fischler. There's another guy we can't get anything by, Bob Papa. Thanks, Jigs. Love saving a beauty. We will check in on the Rangers at Madison Square Garden. They're involved in a tight checking affair with the Florida Panthers. We'll run through the NHL scoreboard and take a look at how the Knicks are doing in Orlando against the Magic. All that and more, but when we come back, the hockey maven settles in. They'll be joined by Boom Boom. After two periods of play, the Islanders with a 2-0 lead over the Montreal Canadiens. Severe storm warning is in effect throughout the Midwest, extending to the East Coast. There is an oasis in the desert where you can do just about everything, or just do nothing at all. The Point Hilton Resorts in Phoenix, Arizona, just a phone call away. It's Toyota's main event sales event. In this corner, Cameron. 
Lease a Camry for just $2.39 a month. Or buy a Camry with low 2.9% finance. And the totally new Avalon, starting at just $22,758. Both out of Georgetown, Kentucky. Camry and Avalon, two heavyweights from Toyota. Toyota's main event sales event. I never realized the world was so full of hazards. That's why there's a company like MetLife. Because sometimes things do get out of control. Hey! That's why over 40 million people look to me. To be there when things go wrong. That's why you should get met. It pays. Dedication. Drama. Danger. Experience life on a lethal floating city with access you won't believe and action only the Discovery Channel can bring. Don't miss Carrier, Fortress at Sea. Narrated by Martin Sheen. Premiering Sunday at 9 Eastern and Pacific on the Discovery Channel. Explore your world. The man, the legend, the greatest wild animal trainer of all time is back as Ringling Brothers and Barnum and & Bailey proudly present Gunther Gable Williams in a history-making special guest appearance. This is a once-in-a-lifetime chance to see the magic and grace of the most charismatic circus performer ever as Gunther Gable Williams steps back into the spotlight for special New York area performances only. Coming to Nassau Coliseum March 15th through 21st. Buy tickets at the box office and Ticketmaster. Introducing Continental Airlines Bake Sale. Great low fares throughout the Caribbean, Mexico, and Florida. Thawing out has never been easier. Stan Fischler at Nassau Coliseum, 2 0. The Isles over Montreal, the end of two, yet Montreal leading in the shots on goal. The Volvo shots on goal has its 17, Montreal, and 13 for the Islanders. For a recap of two periods of play right now, we're going to go up to my colleagues, Jig Mc, Jigs McDonald and Bernie Jeffreyan in the booth. We've got 20 minutes of hockey left. It could be wide open, Mr. Jeffreyan. Well, I have to say that the Detroit Red Wings are skating very well, but as far as that brawl there, Felony, first of all, Bobby Simpson never did anything. He just cross-checked command, and he should get five and two, and, uh, the announcing right now, but as far as I'm concerned, I think that the, the Flames are going to come on strong in the third period. <laughs> you were faked out. <laughs> were you, were you, fa I mean, you don't get faked out much, but you got faked out, right? Well, I didn't know what to say. Uh, when I saw that, this uh, nice-looking guy, I said to myself, that somebody in the truck made a mistake, pressed the wrong button. Now, you, you matured, that's all. The only difference is, is you're, right? you're more mature. Oh, okay. I think it's marvelous. I thank you very kindly for this uh, interview. Who's that guy who's interviewing you? I didn't recognize I don't even know the guy. <laughs> okay, let's talk a little hockey now. Two periods of play. Islanders is leading 2 nothing. Canadians seem to be coming on. Uh, Canadians leading in shots on goal. What do you see? What do you think? Well, Stan, just like I told you before, I cannot understand. You're going to have to explain it to me. How can two goals were scored the same way? Turgeon came out of the corner without being touched. I guarantee you right now what's going on in the Canadian room. What? Be sure of one thing. That Jacques Demers, he's talking to his defenseman and saying, how can a guy come out of the corner with the puck without being touched and score the goal? The first goal, the Islander, the same way. I mean, if this thing would happen with Toe Blake, you wouldn't play the rest of the game. Toe Blake was the Hall of Fame coach, won five cups in a row with the Boomer. But one of the interesting things and the difference is, if you saw them coming off the ice, the Canadians had a ton of coaches. They only had the mayors. They had uh, uh, Jacques Lapierre, Jean Shot. Shot. They got a goalie coach. They got this other guy in the range. How many? What did Toe Blake need any help when he coached you? Are you kidding? Toe Blake didn't need no help. I mean, now, I mean, I really don't understand. You got a coach for a goaltender. Now you got a coach for the right winger. Now you got a coach for you got more coach than players. <laughs> the only thing is, is I told Stan before. At the beginning of this game, 10 minutes, Montreal don't score. I know that the game is not over, but the Islanders are playing too well right now. Stan, 
Every time Montreal touched the puck, one Islander goes after him, the other one takes his place, and the, our goaltender is playing very, very well. I mean, what can I say? Big problem for the Islanders, though, in the third period, Boomer, if they go into a shell and they play through defensive. They can't do that, right? Well, this is, this is the thing, Stan. Now, here comes the coach. The coach now has to get into the room and get his guy ready for the third period and say, look, fellas, we win this game. We're back in the hunt overall. You understand? Yeah. Now they cannot let Montreal Canadiens take the play over. Now, if they go back and stay at the blue line and wait for the Montreal Canadiens, they're going to lose the game. They uh, cannot stay that. Lauren Henning has uh, done a pretty good job with all these injuries. And the thing that I thought was terrific about this game is the way the Islanders got kind of new guys in there. You know, Bob Beers is playing his first game. He's playing pretty good. Gordy Deneen playing pretty good. He's only here a couple of games. Yeah, but you see, you have to have guys to replace the other guy. What do you think you're wearing the Islanders sweater? Just to look in the crowd? <laughs> I mean, that's why they sign you. That's why they sign you to replace. If somebody gets hurt, right? That's why they've got you to replace. That's it. Boomer, thanks very much. After this break, we'll return to Bob Pop in our Sports Authority Game Time Studios. Save me! Save me! Save me! I'm being held here at Franklin Square Forge, and you can save me and dozens of other Benjamin Franklins. When you buy any new Ford, a new conversion van, or a quality pre-owned car at Franklin Square Ford. Don't let them keep me here another minute when you can put me in your pocket and have a new Ford in your driveway too. Franklin Square Ford, 690 Hempstead Turnpike, Franklin Square. Remember this, when looking for reliable service on any BMW, make certain the price is guaranteed lowest. At Haverstadt of Huntington, you can now get the best service on your BMW at the guaranteed lowest price on Long Island. Plus, you get the advantage of extended service hours and much more. Extraordinary service, convenient hours, lowest prices, guaranteed. At Haverstadt of Huntington, we'll take good care of you and your car. We guarantee it. <laughs> Want all the latest breaking baseball news? Sports Channel's got it. From striking players to replacement players, from the front office to the diamond, it's on Sports Channel. Join Fran Healy from Florida for the Mets Spring Training Report, Friday at 10.30, only on Sports Channel. Promotional considerations provided by Cross. Select a writing instrument as you would select a work of art. For classic beauty, lasting quality, and assured value, give Cross fine writing instruments. Doesn't your signature deserve the very best? After two periods, the Islanders with a 2-0 lead over Montreal. The Rangers are trying to keep their grip on first place in the Atlantic Division. Tonight, the Florida Panthers are at Madison Square Garden. To the highlights we go. Jumbo Elliott and Kent Graham, they don't like the cowboy hat for the cameraman. Graham throws his first incompletion of the year. Scoreless in the second, Rangers on the power play. Brian Noonan sets it up in front. Sorry, Brian, you can't use your elbow. Goal is disallowed. And right now at Madison Square Garden, as we check the scoreboard, after two periods of play, no score. Florida, the Rangers. Rangers out shooting 7 to 11. John Van Beesbrook in goal for Florida. Meanwhile, Whalers and Senators. First period, game tied at 1. Whalers on a 2 on 1. Jeff Sanderson, wrist one pass. Don Beaupre, 2 1. Hartford. Later in the period, Whalers up 2 1. Ottawa on the rush. And then Turgeon with the shot. And Rob Goudreau with the follow and the rebound is fourth of the year. 3 2. Whalers after 1. Right now, after 2. The Whalers have opened this one up. They lead it 5 2. Sanderson has two goals in the game. And Darren Turcott has scored as well. Second period, Washington and Philadelphia are tied at 2. Winnipeg playing this evening. The Stars with a 1 0 lead in the first. Edmonton and Calgary a 9 30 start. San Jose and Vancouver at 10 30, as is Chicago and Los Angeles. The Knicks continue their chase of first place against the Magic. The two teams meeting at the O Arena in Orlando at the half. The Magic with a four point lead. Shaquille O'Neal with 25 points at the half. We'll have all the highlights following tonight's Islander game. We'll take you back to the Coliseum for second period stats and highlights. The Islanders with a 2-0 lead after two. 
Islanders Hockey is brought to you in part by Meineke Discount Mufflers. Check your local yellow pages for the dealer nearest you. Mommy, how do brakes work? They'll explain everything, dear. Brakes for shoes? They'll tell us all about it. How can you buy brakes if you don't know anything about them? Because I always shop with people I trust. When it comes to brakes, it's not what you know, it's where you go. You can always trust the folks at Monarchy to give you quality, dependable brakes at a great price. I trust the champ. Take it from the champ. At Monarchy, you're not going to pay a lot, but you'll get a lot. I guarantee it. Okay, tell me about this price patrol again. Just a bunch of dedicated people who make sure that the prices at Nobody Beats the Wiz are the best they can be. Oh, come on. They really check their competition's prices? Consistently. It's kind of like having an insurance policy against paying too much. What if the price patrol misses something? Unlike you, they won't. If they do, Nobody Beats the Wiz will beat the price and give you 10% of the difference in the price. I like the concept. What's not to like? Nobody Beats the Wiz. Or me. You and I see why. Okay, new rules. Individuals are no longer more important than the team. You want to see that championship? Put it in here. Nobody can do it alone, but together we can do it. Sports magazines include more team photos. More game balls go to linemen. We all play more as a team. We pat someone on the butt when they fail and celebrate like madmen when they succeed. Starter, it's about team. Try this toothpaste for your sensitive teeth. No way. My dentist wants me to use Sensodyne, remember? This is Sensodyne. Sensodyne with baking soda. Well? No pain. And I love that clean feeling. Sensodyne. Now with baking soda. At National Car Rental, we keep you moving. Because at National, green means go. Two periods complete at the Nassau Coliseum. The Islanders 20 minutes away from a victory. 2-0 lead over the Montreal Canadiens. Jigs McDonald and Ed Westfall rejoin us with second period stats and highlights. Take it away, guys. All right, Bob. The Islanders with a goal in the first, a goal in the second. We get right to the score sheet. In the opening period, Ray Ferraro is to get his 11th of the season from Flatley and King at 944. And in the second period, it's Pierre Turgeon's eighth goal of the season, three of which have come in games against the Canadiens. This one on assistant. 13.09 is the time, and the Islanders go to the third, leading 2-0. The highlights of the night's action brought to you by your Tri-State Jeep Eagle dealers. Sigmund Palpe with some good forechecking. I'm surprised he didn't get a, an assist, but watch Terjean. He went, he faked to the far side, pulled it to the near side, and that got the Islanders a 2-0 lead. Terjean taking it off the boards, and as that said, to the back end, boom. Goaltenders don't like backhands. They don't know where it's going. Players shooting them, they don't know where it's going either. But it found its way to the net. Montreal has outshot the Islanders by a margin of four, 17 to 13. It's the Islanders leading this hockey game two to nothing. Back to the Nassau Coliseum for the third period in just a few moments. I want to know. I want to know about meeting that special someone. Sorry, can't help you there. I want to know more about I can live with. No way, not in this commercial. I want to know more about Rogaine. Rogaine with minoxidil? Yeah. Anybody else? Yeah. yeah. Okay, just call this number now for a free information kit on Rogaine topical solution. It could help answer your question because it's filled with all kinds of facts about Rogaine. And because you need a prescription to get Rogaine, we'll send you a list of local doctors and special money-saving offers to help you decide if Rogaine is right for you. But I want to know right now. We'll mail it to you today. So what are you waiting for? Call now for your free information kit. Call 1-800-441-3337. <laughs> In the years to come, thousands of people will be protected because of a significant innovation from Volvo. Volvo introduces the world's first side impact airbag. Drive safely. 
Are you ready for Saints Lacrosse? St. Rod and Smoke, the Boston Blazers. It's coming. Finally, the clash Friday night at Nassau Coliseum. Brought to you by Bud Light. Just how hard hitting is Saints action? Be there. Because the Blazers are going to find out. Teams are back out on the ice, getting ready for the third period. The Islanders with a 2 to nothing lead over the Montreal Canadiens. Promotional considerations provided by Cartier. This Thursday, the Islanders play host to the Washington Capitals at 7.30 p.m. Here's your chance to take advantage of two exciting Islander discount ticket programs. Any fan who presents their WRCN card at the box office can receive two for one. Tickets on select $45 seats. Also, all fans 21 and under can purchase a $19 seat for just $15. These discount tickets are available at the Coliseum box office only starting two hours prior to the game. Lauren Henning at the Allender bench has set Ferraro, King, and flatly out as his forward line and right from the faceoff, the Canadians have dumped it in and then got to the puck. Olikoff gets to Muller. Ray Ferraro moves the puck on toward Gary King. Richois pinched it on him. Ferraro gets it out of there and chases it down the left side. The defenseman, Racine, had to come all the way across the ice to get to it. Now Muller brings the puck into the Islander zone. Chased in deeper by Luongo. It took Muller to the board solidly. Mark Recchi ends up in the grasp of Molokov, and the puck is knocked loose. This is Vincent Dompus. Put it right on Ferraro's stick. Thank you. Ferraro plays it into the Montreal zone, picks it up again as he drives on Racine here. Let's get around the end boards. Overcome King. Leans in with a body check on Bridgebois. Knauts with a shot that's turned aside. This is Travis Green from back of the net. Needs Vasky at the left point. Long shot steered aside by Tugnut. King tying up Racine's stick. Green gets to the puck, gave it to Knauts. Can't get it through a pile of skates. Here's Travis Green. Fires and hits the outside of the net. Steve Thomas leaves it on the end boards, and the Canadians give it right back to Thomas. Played it deeper. Patrice Brisebois moves it behind the Montreal goal, and Racine turns it up the wing, but not out. This is Steve Thomas. Thomas put a move on Muller, and then couldn't finish it off, and the Canadians end up icing the puck. Pretty good flurry for the Islanders. Excellent flurry, Jake. What a way to start a period, leading 2 to nothing at home. Keeps the fans into the hockey game, gives them something to get excited about. Depress the other team. Jock Demir on his... Left, your right, Steve Chuck. And of course, the big guy, Jacques LaPerriere, who has a son playing in the NHL now with the St. Louis Blues, Ian LaPerriere, or Danny. Danny, yeah. Danny. The other LaPerriere is not related. They have added an assist to uh, Zygmunt Palfi after Ed Westfall's lobbying. Uh, you turn on goal. We've often talked about do they listen to us or do they not? Apparently, they do. Yes. It is 2-0, Islanders over the Canadians, Montreal out of the zone. Di Pietro through center ice, into the Islander territory. Petra back to Di Pietro. Paul Di Pietro plays it around the end board. Sturgeon goes to it. Over went Gord Deneen as well. Buck loose on the end boards again. Bob Beers got it to the line, but not out. Schneider moving it around the end boards. Loney goes to his man. Palfi went to the puck and pops it towards center ice. Matt Snyder drops back. Over goes Pierre Turgeon. Wrapped up by Petrov. Keen steps into the Islander zone. Faked once. Played it through Deneen, but Loney went back. That's Beers on to Paul Fee. Now to Turgeon. Turgeon over the Montreal line. Snyder cut up to him. Matt Snyder taken off the puck by Turgeon. It came right out in front and steered aside by Tugnut. Molikov thought about going in, but Petrov started out, and Molikov just reached over and knocked it away from he's him. He's been very effective in this hockey game. The, the most effectiveness he's had, Jiggs, all season long with using that long reach of his and the hockey stick poke checking. The Canadians start out again. Through center ice. Gore shoots one from the blue line that went high. Molikov banks it off the boards and out. Popovic with it at center ice. Back to Daniel. 
to Bure. He's into the Islander zone with a feed to the left side. Nice play by Luongo to get to the man, but the Canadians have the puck. This is Brune. Benoit Brune spun it in front, but Luongo was there. Standing side by side with Savage. They played it out. Now Savage is over the Islander line, giving it to Bure. Checked from behind by McGinnis, and up ice comes Molokov. Quick transition. Molokov, three on two at the Montreal line. Can't get it to Thomas. Right back to Molokov. He shoots. That's wide. A pug nut sticking up into the seats. Exciting start to the third period, but on the Modell scoreboard, it remains Islanders 2, Canadians nothing. <laughs> about retirement investing, but afraid the boat may leave without you? Here's a comfortable thought. MetLife's Preference Plus, a tax-deferred variable annuity. It's a chance to get your toe in the water. Preference Plus lets you be conservative or aggressive in your investing, and it's easy to understand. Want to retire in style? Ask about MetLife's Preference Plus. Get Met. It pays. Lauren Henning's team after the timeout making some changes here sending out Mick Lakota with Benoit Hogue and Brad Delgarno Donald Brashier facing Mick Lakota. The two of them squared off in the first period tonight, resulting in major penalties just before the 10-minute mark. Hogue moved in to knock the puck away from Brisebois. Now it's cleared to the Islander blue line where Chanel handled it. Brisebois steps up. Mick Lakota cleared that, but it's dumped in deeper. Ed Ronan in chase. Tied up with Vasky. This is Hogue dancing from back of the Islander's net. Up toward Mick Lakota, and he's cleared it toward center ice. Patrice Brisebois moves it on. Muller can't get to it. Here's Chenault for the Islanders. Chenault played it away from Ronan. Muller is playing with Ronan and Brashear against Del Garno. Hogue and Vakota for the Islanders. The puck in and out of Dennis Vasky skates. Then while Hogue bounces it deep into the Canadian zone. Ron Tugnut, who faced the Islanders twice last season, in the uniform of the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim, and once as a Canadian, watches as his team moves into the Islanders' zone, but then gave up control of the puck. Ray Ferraro now. Ferraro across the Montreal line with a shot that went wide. Matt Schneider goes back in the net. Knocked it away. Here's King in after the puck. Can't get it to Ferraro. Matt Schneider moves it on the boards, but it'll be held at the blue line and then dumped in deeper by Deneen. In comes Flatley. Patrick Flatley is checked, and the Canadians will get out of there. Ed Ronan bounces one up the boards, chasing it into the zone is Petrov. Beers bumps him, Petrov drives back in the net, centered. Covering there was Deneen, up to King, two on two, now three on two at center ice as Ferraro is up quickly. Ray Ferraro is the third man for Montreal, got back, couldn't center it cleanly. The Canadians come to center, long pass to DiPietro, to Odeline. Couldn't find Di Pietro, was headed for the back of the net. It comes right out in front, Oda line at the blue line. Franks one up that is blocked. Bounced off Derry King, came outside the line, shoveled back in. Canadians don't get the play on side again. So the whistle. More hockey coming your way Thursday night on Sports Channel as the Devils hit the road, going to Boston for a game with the Bruins. Obviously, Sports Time or Sports Authority Game Time show is at 7.15. The action at 7.30 from the Boston Garden. It's live and exclusive on Sports Channel's New Sport Thursday night. Devils and Bruins. And on Friday night, not on Sports Channel, not on any coverage that I've been able to find, is the Islander Alumni Game. But <laughs> fans, you got to get out and see it. We'll tell you who's going to be in the game, where they're playing, and for what cause. Chris Luongo feeds Troy Loney tight on the left wing boards. Up steps Turgeon over the blue line with a pass to Palfi. Stigman Palfi holds it, holds it, centers. Loney couldn't get to it. Neither can Turgeon. 
Puffy knocked it back in deeper, but it's cleared out now, and this is Gord Deneen with a feed to Puffy. Gave it away. Brune at the Allender blue line. Feeds the latecomer. That's Daniel. The centering pass was blocked by Puffy. Daniel comes out in front center. Turgeon has the puck. Turgeon with Loney and Puffy. Turgeon trying to get deeper in the Montreal zone, but Popovic knocked it off his stick. Plays it around the boards and over the glass. 13 and a half minutes left in this third period. The Allender alumni game this Friday night is against the Nassau County High School All-Stars. It'll be played at 7.30 at the Long Beach Arena. Tickets available at the Allender store and also the Long Beach Arena. Players committed to play are Ed Westfall. Committed, mind you. Yes. Bob Nystrom. Yes. Wayne Mary. Gary Howitt, John Tonelli, Brian Mullen, and many, many more. Tickets are $10, and all proceeds will go to the Nassau County High School Hockey Program. The game is this Friday night, March 3rd, at the Long Beach Arena at 7.30. We played them a couple of weeks, well, maybe two or three weeks ago out at the rinks. Boy, did they pull a fast one on us. Those kids are good, too. They had two teams. We played half a game against one team, and then they sicked a bunch of young fellas on us for the second half. But we threw our conditioning at them. There he <laughs> You're kidding. I know. <laughs> Did win it, I understand, though. Mm -hmm. right? The Allender alumni? Yes, both games. Games. <laughs> this hockey game, the Allenders of 95 are leading the Montreal Canadiens. Kirk Muller into the zone with a pass back. Racine shot tipped wide. Comes to Brazebois. Plays it all the way around the end boards. Over goes Steve Thomas. Travis Green gets to it, can't get it around Racine. Now it bounces toward the line and is held in, only to have Green move over, get tripped up in his effort to move it out. On to Thomas, ripped one that was off the stick of defenseman Steve Racine eventually. Brought back by Brazebois. Canadians come to center ice. Keen checked at the Allender blue line, the puck goes in a little deeper. Donald Brashear digs it off the boards, got knocked down. On to the puck and clearing it out is Bob Beers. That's going the length of the ice. Matt Schneider will touch up. An icing call made against the Islanders. Stops the clock and gives us a chance to check in with the Modell scoreboard. No change since Turgeon's goal that made it 2-0. In the years to come, thousands of people will be protected because of a significant innovation from Volvo. Volvo introduces the world's first side impact airbag. Drive safely. March on Sports Channel roars in with exclusive action. The Devils and Isles shoot the game ground in the playoff race against Messier's Rangers, Lindros and the Flyers, the Penguins, Sabres, Bruins, and more. The next clash with NBA superstars like Shaquille O'Neal, David Robinson, Reggie Miller, and Carl Malone. Get ready for March Madness with coverage of the Atlantic 10 and MAC Conference tournaments. Fridays, Fran Healy's got the latest Mets info on our spring training reports. It's all coming your way in March, only on Sports Channel. A lot of hockey left to play here in the third period, but Bob Beers, for not having had a whole lot of ice time in game conditions, has held up well so far. Indeed he has. He's back out of defense. As you saw, lined up here with Gord Deneen. The Canadians get the draw. This is Schneider cutting to the left side. Beers went down. Schneider went around him and centered it right across the front of the net. That drive from the point by Odeline was off the target. Schneider holds it in. Soderstrom routinely with that long shot, and it's Benoit Hogue moving it to Turgeon. Delgarno with him on the right side, but Turgeon gets knocked down. On came Benoit Hogue into the corner toward Turgeon. Deeper now to Delgarno. Out to Hogue, and he's hauled down as he went to shoot it. The Canadians out of the zone, but the puck rolling and bouncing. Bob Beers backs up, didn't get a stick on it. Mark Lamb for the Canadians works it in deeper. Petrov to the front of the net, but they can't center it to him in time. Now Petrov ends up on the boards, trying to get away from Deneen. Turgeon stepped in front of him, allowing Deneen to handle it. Nice play on to Bob Beers, but a penalty call here. Wow, interference kick. You know, I was waiting to see what was going to happen. The Islanders were in the act of scoring and were taken down. There was no penalty. And then what seemed to be a harmless interference, Benoit Hogue gets it. 
Interesting that he would make that call and let the other one go. Benoit Hogue there, number 33. You see him out in front, gets a little bit of a grip. The player, Montreal's player, fighting off the check. That's Mark Lamb. Wow! Down at the other end, here's Hogue in the act of scoring. Look at here. Wow, he gets his feet kicked out from underneath him. Now let's take a look at our MetLife trivia quiz question for a Tuesday night. And who does it involve? A goaltender who posted the Canadiens' first shutout against the New York Islanders. Who would it be? Rogie Vasha wasn't there at that time. Gump Worsley wasn't there at that time. Dennis Heron, was he around then? Any Heron for the Canadians in 72, 73? Or was it 72, 73, the first time first you were shut out by the Canadians? Hmm. <laughs> for their sake, hopefully. <laughs> uh, we'll ponder that for that life, won't we? We'll watch the Canadians on the power play for the sixth time tonight. A long shot up the slot, steered wide by Domfus on a deflection attempt. And it's slammed out of there by Travis Green. Green and Flatley go for a rest. Terjean and McGinnis come out to pick up the penalty killing chores. Moving out for Montreal. He's racing. Give it to Domfus. Recky trailing him. Collides with Domfus. That allows Molokov to move it on. Marty McGinnis steps over center and fires one high. Matt Schneider setting up the power play for Montreal. Gave it to Mark Recky. Back to Racine. Couldn't get it to Recky, so he turned away from the forecheck and then moved it on to Domfus. Vincent Domfus spreads things out a little. Muller to the front of the net. The pass went to Recky. Back to Domfus. To the blue line. Long shot is tipped and wide. Comes right out in front. Domfus, a turnaround, is deflected wide by Vasky. Domfus puts it on the end board. This is Recky to Domfus. Shoots. That's why. May have been hit by the goal stick up on the shaft. In any event, it's cleared down the ice now by Dennis Vasky. Ten minutes exactly left in this third period. 28 seconds left in Hogue's interference penalty. Islanders two, Canadians no score. But Grace Brisebois slams it around the boards in the Islanders' zone. Molotov gave it to Delgarno. who just cleared it to center where all the line was waiting. Brisebois hammers it back in again. Canadians get the play on side. The Islanders get the puck out of there. Did they? Montreal did. They shot the puck in, and they still had two forwards in the Islanders' end. They had to clear the Islanders' end. Here they come again. Bure feeds the far side, but Hogue is out of the penalty box now. The Canadian center one, Brice Bois, ends up on the boards with it, however. And Vladimir Molotov starts out three on two for the Islanders. Molotov to Troy Loney. Back to Molotov. Shoots just wide of Tugnut. The puck ends up in the center ice area. Big hit thrown by King. And Savage lined up, and Loney chips the puck on into the Montreal end of the ice. Total line banks the puck off the board. Out into the center ice zone. Vasky stepped up on Brunet. Chanel's back here. Brunet pinching in. All three Canadians on this side of the ice. They put it behind the net. Brunet gets to it. Centers. Gary King checked his man, and out of the zone it goes. King with a pretty healthy whack across Di Pietro's head and making that play. He hasn't been shy about throwing some body checks, too, Jake. He started that the other game against Pittsburgh. Had the same pregame meal today. Petrov tested Soderstrom with that hard drive, and it's cleared out of there by the Islanders. An icing call to be made once Daniel touches up. On your Modell scoreboard this Tuesday night, the Islanders have a 2 to nothing lead over the Montreal Canadiens. The key to your car's reliability lies in your maintenance habits. Do-it-yourselfers know that for one-stop shopping, AutoRight has all the auto parts and accessories to keep your car at its peak condition at the right price. Like Haviland Formula 3 motor oil for protection from heat stress, starting friction, and engine dirt. Use Haviland Formula 3 for every oil change and add more life to your car. If you expect maximum value for your dollar and maximum performance from your car, do it right at AutoRight and drive safe. Country cousins all over Long Island have discovered bootleggers in Massapequa. The one-stop shop to your drop source for all the boots and accessories you'll ever need. We're talking big savings on brand-name boots of every description to fit cowpokes of every age and size. 
Bootleggers in Massapequa has it all. Western boots, work boots, biker boots, dancing boots, leather jackets, belt hats, and much more. So ride on over to Bootleggers in Massapequa and discover the saving place for Western boots at bootleg prices. Oleg Petrov, 23 years old. He's quick, he's fast. You take a lot of penalties against a player such as he. There's the shot. He's using the Gordonine as a screen. Good stop by Tommy Soderstrom. Each team has had three shots on goal in this third period. Neither team has scored. And Montreal has had six power play opportunities on the night. 0 for 6 with the power play. Hmm. There was a time that they changed the rules because of the potency of the Montreal power play. And that was back in the days of Jeffrey on. Delavo, Richard, and so many more. On comes Steve Thomas. Drops the puck for McGinnis, who is checked. The Canadians come down the left side. Brazier on the rush. Drops it off from the left side. Brune went to the front of the net, but they couldn't get the puck to him. Kirk Muller battles his way out of the corner. The backhander doesn't get to the net. Now Brazier, a backhand shot. Turned aside by Soderstrom, and Muller couldn't get it teed up again. The Islanders trying to move out. Marty McGinnis is checked. Here's Lawongo. Taken to the boards, the puck came loose. Travis Green gets it up in the air, and that floats down inside the Montreal blue line. J.J. Daniel, the Popovic. Popovic out of his own zone, but Miss Muller cutting through center ice. Green Chanout moves it toward Dennis Vasky. Seven and a half minutes left in the third period as Vasky has dumped it in. Here's Delgarno, got checked off the puck. The Canadians cleared out for Bure, two men back. Bure with a lot of the same moves as his brother, but... Not with quite the same skill. He, de he moves well. He moves quick, Jake, but he doesn't hold the puck the same way when he's in motion. Here's Terzhan for the Islanders. Long pass to hold off the left side, and a shot hits the side of the net. Cleared out. Picked up by Beers. Over to the knee. Got it in deep. Ron Tuggott moves out of the net. Leaves it for Matthew Schneider. Schneider to Bure. Couldn't hold it. Deneen dumps it as far as the Montreal blue line. This is Odeline. While Odeline into the Islander zone was chased wide, and that put the play offside. Let's go back and see who it was. The Montreal goaltender who shut out the Islanders for the first time. His trivia quiz for Beth Life. And the book says it was. Dryden, then? No. Nope. Oh, that's so, so tired. tired. Of all things. Really? Wow. That long for them from 72? It wasn't Patrick. Huh? <laughs> we no. knew it wasn't Patrick. 86. Wow. You, we're a lot better than I thought we were in those early years. <laughs> <laughs> what a potent offense. He could care less. Right now he's probably thinking about Florida and his place down there, and he'd probably be better off trying to make four-foot putts, trying to stop the puck from going into 24 square feet of net. Tough couple of games. Shut out at home, seven to nothing. Beaten last night, six to one, by the New Jersey Devils. Trailing here, two to nothing, with just over six minutes to play in the third period. Racine with a pass that was blocked by Steve Thomas. Steve Racine clears it out. On into the Islanders zone, handling the puck again was Petrov, but it's cleared out of there. Up to Keane, checked at the blue line. Di Pietro trying to get the play on side. It's fed Brisbois. Back to the far side, and Petrov has squeezed off the play. Di Pietro is there. Able to grab a screen, however. On board Thomas. He has been pinched in. Thomas very alertly turned and played it out the other side. The Islanders play it right, Jake. They don't want to play it in their own end of the ice, but if they do get caught in there, there's going to be openings. Montreal are going to send defensemen up to join the forwards in the offensive zone. Looks over five minutes to play in the third period. The Canadians move into the Islander zone. Brune dropped it back and Muller gets checked. They're able to hold it in at the point for a moment. Then they are successful in their effort to move it in. Askey. Bob Beers up around the boards toward Patrick Flatley. On to Ferraro. Has King moving with him on the left side. Ferraro chipped it toward the corner. Popovic and King are there. King pushing Popovic to the board. And Daniel plays the puck to center ice off Donald Brazier's stick. 
Bob Beers very smartly plays it right back deep into the Montreal zone. Adams arrived there and move it out. Gord Deneen comes back to play the puck for Bob Beers. Gord Deneen. Right side to Ferraro. Long pass. Here's Beers up on the play. Bob Beers with a shot. That took off and just skimmed over the crossbar. The Canadians try to bring it out. Turning back is Brunei as Loney did a nice job of shadowing him. Brunei's pass. It turned out. Peter Popovic plays it around the end boards. Over goes Matthew Schneider. Schneider with a long pass. It's too far for Brunei. Chris Lawango gets pushed off the puck. And Bure shot ends up in the seats. And the clock has stopped with four minutes and seven seconds remaining in the third period. The visitors trying to find some way to solve this. Here's your Bodell scoreboard. When the game is on, if action gets too rough, remember... The ice is always smooth. Bud Ice and Bud Ice Light, official beer sponsors of the NHL. It's Toyota's main event sales event in the Sierra Beige Metallic. Four run, tough as they come, and four wheel drive. Get a great lease deal or buy a forerunner and get option package savings of $1,000. Compare forerunner to its competition. It's in a class by itself. So get a deal on this title holder. The main event for a limited time. Now at your Toyota dealers. Another strong game, Jake, for Chris Longo. When you look at the outer defense so far, we still got four minutes to go. Oh, little eye drops. <laughs> the contacts are starting to get a little dry. Keep them lubricated. <laughs> Did he ever miss? Anyway, Janelle handling the puck following the draw. Hard around the board toward Benoit Hull. Knocked away from him by Snyder. Brunei in the corner. Taken off his skate. Let us see if Rude and Baskey continue to battle for the puck. Dean Chanel stepped into his band with a good hit on Savage, and out it comes toward Benoit Hogue. Hogue's pass off Loney skates, picked up by Schneider. The Montreal defenseman has given it to Bure. Larry Bure dumped it in deep. Savage after it. Chanel's got a chunk of him. The puck controlled by Brune who centers. Savage is knocked off, or Gazier rather, was knocked off the puck, and it comes all the way back to the blue line. Long shot there is blocked, a big chance for Montreal, and a fine stop by Soderstrom, but a penalty on the play. It had to be one or the other, and if you ask Tommy Soderstrom, Lorne Henning, or anybody else, give us the penalty, don't let them have the goal. What a stop by Tommy Soderstrom. Just as the penalty was being called, Montreal forced the Islanders to make a mistake. There is the mistake from behind, but look at this save. Bob getting his left hand out, Lyle Odeline coming in from the point. I had just mentioned they'll come down from the blue line. Dan Fischler, a nice side with an update, and uh, the Boomer. Well, the Islanders are in trouble now, Boomer, with this penalty. What do you think? Well, I'm not too sure about that because the first penalty Montreal had in the third period, they didn't do too well about it. The goaltending is playing very, very good well. And the Islanders, I didn't like the last six, seven minutes. I'm afraid when they all stacked up at the blue line waiting for the Montreal Canadiens, they cannot do that with the Montreal Canadiens. They have to go after them. That's why they got those two goals. Well, I think aggressive penalty killing might, uh, might be the solution. Well, I'm going to tell you this, and if they kill this penalty, the ball game is over. Okay, Jiggs? All right, Stan. One of the things, four, Jake, the ball game is over. <laughs> the ball game is over. Yep. Have a nice day. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> One of the things, if you're looking for a plus on the side of the Islanders, uh, Dean Chanel didn't plan it this way, but they do have the option now for icing the puck. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've been down in their own end of the ice a good part of the third period without that possibility, but now they can. But they better be ready for a pretty good onslaught from the Montreal Canadiens. 
Orton Henning getting Travis Green and Brad Delgarno out as this penalty killer. Chris Luongo and Vladimir Molokov on defense. Muller on the faceoff. Dom Fus and Recky, the other forwards. Schneider and Racine at the blue line. A lot of fencing before the puck is dropped. And linesman Kevin Collins moves in between but allows Muller to stay and he wins the draw. Here's Racine. In deeper to Dom Fus, who scores all the way back to the blue line. Then on to Muller. And a nice play by Molokov to jump in and shoot it down the ice. Well, he's had his best game so far this season. What do you think about pulling the goaltender? Are you much of a gambler? If you're uh, in this stage, yeah, I, I would have to. But Molokov up high around the glass. In and out of the Islanders players' bench. And they're going to bring the puck all the way back into the Islanders' zone. Face off in the offensive zone. Two goals down. You've got about three minutes to go. Right now it's two minutes and 51 seconds. Vladimir Molokov arguing about where the faceoff should go. Your team hasn't responded that well, haven't been playing that well. They're down by two. Say, hey, wait a minute. Pull the goaltender. Might be a little bit, but, well. Two goal think, game, I mean, yeah, why not? If you get one early, I mean, yeah. if you get one out here, I mean, with two men on the ice, plus he's probably thinking over there, Jacques Demir saying to himself, the reason that we're in the hole two to nothing is because they're not playing well, and if I pull the goaltender, it'll be three to nothing. <laughs> But if you lose by two or by three, what's the difference? Exactly. Of course, an empty netter would do nothing to affect Tugnut's goals against average. Puck comes back toward the outer blue line. Racine to the corner for John Booth. Now behind the net, Muller has to chase it. The defenseman Racine came in deep. Over goes Molotov. Puck held by Racine to John Booth. Chases it back to the net. Leads the blue line. Schneider now to Racine for a shot. That misses. Bounces off the back of the net and Recky plays it to the near side. Racine goes in after it. On to Dom Foose. Luongo was on him. Dom Foose can't get it out of there. Chris Luongo chips it loose. And it's Molotov sending it the length of the ice. 52 seconds left in the penalty to Dean Chenault. And in five seconds we'll have only two minutes left in regulation time. Up comes Schneider. Snyder, a little wrap around, brought on by Odeline. Odeline to Muller, nowhere to go with that, and Deneen steps back to the outer net to control the bouncing puck. Or Deneen clears it out. Flatley gets to it at the Montreal line and tucks it in behind the net. 25 seconds remaining in this power play for the Canadians. On past the Brisbois, up the far side. Brunet finds Keane moving in, he shoots, he scores! Mike Keane ruins the zero for Tommy Soderstrom. You can see it building with the play coming through the center ice area. They isolated one of the Islander defensemen and created the two-on-one. That's what it's all about on the power play, and Mike Keane takes advantage of it and put it in. Take another look as the Montreal Canadiens just looks like another power play coming out of their own end of the ice. But here, there's the creation of a two-on-one, and Keane walked in and just put it into the top right-hand corner over the left shoulder. Tommy Soderstrom. There's another look at it. Keane had the option of passing it or shooting it, and he did the right thing. He shot it. Minute and a half left to go in the hockey game. The Islanders lead cut in half. 109 minutes and 58 seconds of shutout hockey turned in by Tommy Soderstrom. So Mike Keane scored that goal. His fourth, as you see, coming at 18-28 of this third period. Would you believe that three of the four goals have come in games against the New York Islanders? Keane had a pair on the first visit to the Forum. Now we have a one-goal game, and Ray Ferraro has dumped the puck in. Canadians start out. Off the boards, but too far for Muller. Harry King turns the center, dumps it in deep. Got not. Moves it around to Snyder, then toward the near wing board, but there's King with a long shot. Handled by Tugnut, and he elects to freeze the puck, forcing a face off in the Montreal zone. What's important right now for the Islanders is to be in the offensive zone. What that does is it keeps Tugnut in the net. Don't let him get out. Don't let them get the extra skater on. Lauren Henning recognizing that. Talking to the players, talking to the coaches. Trying to develop some strategy. He doesn't want to think about 
overtime. He just wants to think about play in the offensive zone. It's two shifts. Rude and Brisbois have the assist on that goal by Mike Keane on the power play. Molotov falling at the blue line, but he got enough of Gompus to take him off the puck. Hatley flatly fires it around to the far side of the ice. Jason this for Arl. The goaltender has gone to the bench. Flatley moves it up the boards. It came right back to him. Patrick Flatley skies it out of there, and Racine has to chase it back. There will not be an icing. Racine hard around the boards. 35 seconds left in regulation. That's Keen, the sixth attacker out. But King stole the puck. Fired one that Racine gloved. Now plays on to the near side toward Gomfus. That's going the length of the ice. Get out to touch up. And an icing call against the Canadian. That's all the Islanders need with 21 seconds remaining. But what a close call. Molokov did the right thing, Jiggs. He got a hold of the feet of the Montreal player to make sure that he wasn't all alone going to the net with the puck. Molokov, who is one of the best skaters in the league, fell down when he was moving backwards, looking to see what kind of a play he made. There's Molokov, number 92. He goes over, backs up, pulls the puck, and then trips. But here, he takes the Montreal player down. That's an insurance marker. Keep him from having a breakaway. Puck got his back into the net. Molokov is on the Islanders' bench. Vasky and Chanel have come out as the defense combination with Travis Green working between Benoit Hogue and Brad Delgarno. On the faceoff, won by Muller. The puck goes to the end board. And again, the goaltender, Puck up, head for the Montreal bench. They get the extra attacker out. Puck in deep under Muller, came loose. Chanel had it, lost it. Dennis Vasky moves it up the left side and bounces at the blue line and outside the line. And the Islanders have held on to beat the Canadians 2 to 1. What a job by Tommy Soderstrom for the Islanders again. And an emotional win for the Islanders. A big two points. That rockets them now back up into second place. Jacques Demir has to go back to the drawing board. Is the Boomer going to be... The general manager of the Montreal Canadiens flew in for this hockey game. If they didn't win it, something. The Islanders don't care. They've got the two points they need. They now have 19, just one behind the Rangers. Well, he's already pulled the trigger on a big deal with the Philadelphia Flyers, but it's turned out to be a bigger deal for Philadelphia than it has for Montreal. Mark Recchi held without a point here tonight. You know the story on the weekend when Leclerc and Desjardins went into Montreal and uh, had, what, four of the, the seven goals between them. And here tonight, the Islanders with a 2-1 to win over the Canadians. You saw the smile from Lauren Henning. All's well here at the Coliseum as we go back and join Bob Papa. Jigs, the big game in the NBA tonight has the Knicks in Orlando. The Knicks lost both of their previous trips to the arena this season. The Magic welcome back Shaquille O'Neal and Horace Grant back to the lineup. Shaq coming off his one-game suspension. And Grant had been nursing his bad back. The hottest rivalry in the East added another chapter to the story that will not be finalized until the postseason. Shaq hungry for a little New York Knickerbocker action. Early on, Shaq, Penny Hardaway, magic in the midst of a 7-0 run. But the Knicks will hang tough. John starts with the pretty move. Two of his 11 first-half points. Magic lead is 1-42-41. Starks will lose the ball, much to the delight of Shaquille O'Neal, who slams home... Two of his 25 points at the half. Magic by four. Third quarter. Horace Grant inside. Hard foul by John Starks coming up right here. This would be ruled a flagrant foul on Starks. And Horace does not like it. Takes some exception. A little pushing and shoving. That's what you would expect with these teams. Then it's Shaq again with the turnaround over Anthony Mason. 33 for Shaq after three. Right now in the fourth quarter at the arena. The Magic, they lead it by 11, 93-82 over the Knicks. We'll keep you posted on that one when it becomes a final. Elsewhere in the NBA, Philadelphia with a 103-100 lead over Washington in the fourth quarter. Kevin Duckworth suspended by the Bullets for the second time this year for failing to keep in good condition. He's over 300 pounds. Third quarter, Miami, a six-point lead at Milwaukee. Houston and Dallas, the Rockets looking for their fourth straight win. They lead it by four in the third quarter. Meanwhile, in the third, San Antonio, 
They've won five in a row, looking for six. They have a seven-point lead over Cleveland, 52-45. Minnesota and Denver, the Nuggets with a 15-point lead in the second quarter. And at 10.30 tonight, the Suns and Clippers. Charles Barkley will be a game-time decision with a sore left knee. The Rangers were in action at the Garden tonight. We'll have the highlights and the complete NHL story in just a bit. But when we come back, more of the post game from the Coliseum, the Islanders with a 2-1 win over the Montreal Canadiens. Save me, save me, save me! I'm being held here at Franklin Square Fort, and you can save me and dozens of other Benjamin Franklins. When you buy any new Ford, a new conversion van, or a quality pre-owned car at Franklin Square Ford. Don't let them keep me here another minute when you can put me in your pocket and have a new Ford in your driveway too. Franklin Square Ford, 690 Hempstead Turnpike, Franklin Square. What happened to you? The new garage door got stuck again. Ugh. Did you call a contractor yet? Yes, I called the contractor. He told me to call the manufacturer, who told me to call the contractor. But it's the same old runaround we got when the, 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 the front door got stuck and the, and the windows leaked. Don't get the runaround. At Elegant Entries, we manufacture, install, and service every door, window, and garage door we sell. For free shop at home service and a location nearest you, call Elegant Entries at 1 800 482 6900. One of the things that separates the champion from everyone else is experience. When it comes to mufflers, nobody knows the ropes like Monarchy. At Monarchy, you'll always get a high-quality muffler at a great price, plus friendly, dependable service. They don't call us champs for nothing. Take it from the champ at Monarchy. You're not going to pay a lot, but you'll get a lot. I guarantee it. Want all the latest breaking baseball news? Sports Channel's got it. From striking players to replacement players, from the front office to the diamond, it's on Sports Channel. Join Fran Healy from Florida for the Mets Spring Training Report, Friday at 10.30, only on Sports Channel. Saturday, the run and gun and slamming and jamming heats up when March Madness kicks off with the MAC tournament. Local teams battle it out for an NCAA playoff berth. All the action starts here Saturday, only on Sports Channel. The Islanders get back to the 500 mark with a 2-1 win over the Montreal Canadiens. Back to the Nassau Coliseum we go after one period. Stan Fischler talked with Gord Deneen about the unique style of the Islander goalie, and he joins Stan now. Stan? Uh, Bob, I remember the first time we talked to Tommy Soderstrom. It was at New Jersey, and it was a, a tie that the Islanders managed to squeeze out, and everybody said, well, can they take anything from here? And this man has been the real star of the team carrying the club, and uh, tonight... A lot of people said the Canadians were to come in and bomb the Islanders because they hadn't been playing that well. And the Islanders losing a lot of guys, and you guys just played a very courageous game. Yeah, it was a real team game. Uh, everybody played good, and uh, we played really good, solid defense. Uh, Canadians didn't have too many shots. Now, every goalie and every hockey player pretty much has a superstition. We noticed one that you have. I don't know whether you fans have noticed that Tommy Sajum skates out at the end and then he skates back over the line. What is that all about? Where did that come from? Yeah, it started in Sweden. That's why the, they call me psycho there. But uh, it's a superstitious thing. Who calls you psycho? Yeah, my friends in Sweden because of that and a couple of other things. But what can I do? And a nice friend. We call you ace. We don't call you psycho. Uh, that's not... nothing bad in Sweden. But... <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> that's a lovable term. Yeah. Now, in tonight's game... The Islanders went ahead 2-0. Uh, Boom Boom Jeffrey told me that he thought the Islanders were making a mistake going into a shell. Were you worried in the last 10 minutes? Uh, not really, because, like I said, we play really good start, uh, defense, and uh, when we get the puck, we put it deep in the other end, so it was pretty safe. Gordy Dunin uh, stepped in. Uh, Bob Beers, his first game, he looked pretty good with these new guys on defense. What do you think? Yeah, everybody played great, and uh, the players in there, they played great too, so that was good. Okay, in the third period, the Islanders uh, were forced into a couple of penalties, and a power play save here. Give me the goalie's eye view of this one. Uh, yeah, I stopped the first one, but the guy was in front of the net, so I didn't know if he was going to deflect it or not. So, Tommy, if I would ask you, what is the best 
part of your game? Is it reflexes? Is it gloves? Is, is it the foot movement? What do you think you do best? Uh, I don't know, but uh, I don't want to say that in TV, though. I'll keep that for myself. <laughs> very, very smart. <laughs> very, very smart. Okay. The team is now 500. Do you think this club is capable of... Uh, we got Washington coming up on Thursday. What do you think? Yeah, I hope so. Well, uh, we played re really good the last couple of weeks, and I uh, hope we're still going to win the games. How about at the end, uh, when... Uh, uh, it looked like the Canadians might tie the game. Did you think that they would pull their goalie earlier than they did? Yeah, I thought they were going to pull the goalie when they have a power play there, three minutes left, but they didn't do that. Okay, they score either way on a power play. Are you feeling like a real Islander now? I mean, you've been here a bit, you've been playing a little bit. You feel like an Islander? Yeah, I've been here for a couple of months now, so I like that. Okay, and the fans like him. Beautiful game from Tommy Sadis from Jigs, Eddie. It was Stan. He carried a shutout into the last minute and a half of the game. Ray Ferraro's take the Islanders to the lead in the first period at 9.44 as the 11th of the season, Flatley and King assisting. In the second period, it's Pierre Turgeon with an assist now to Zygmunt Palfi. Turgeon gets what turns out to be the winning goal as 8th of the season, scored at 13.09 of period 2. Late in the third, on a power play, it's Mike Keane with his fourth goal of the year. Brunet and Brisebois assisted at 18.28 Ended almost 110 minutes of shutout hockey for Tommy Soderstrom. But 2-1 to one is the final score. The Islanders over the Canadians. The shots on goal total presented by your Volvo dealers. The Canadians are to outshoot the Islanders by two in each period. Nine, seven, eight, six, and uh, by one, excuse me, in the third. Six, five in the final tonight. Montreal with 23 shots. The Islanders had 18. Specialty teams. Montreal is one for seven on the power play. The Islanders had only two power play chances in the entire game, but now after 19 games, 500 hockey, eight wins, eight losses, three ties, 48 goals, four, 55 against. When you think about the goals against, Jigs, which are things that everybody thinks about when you're a hockey player, particularly when you're a coach and goaltender, uh, Pittsburgh, only a goal, Montreal, only a goal, that says a lot for the Islanders and their posture in their own end of the ice. I'm sure that they'd like to have played a little differently in the third period rather than spend so much time in their own end. But they, as Tommy Soderstrom said, that they, they had confidence. They, they thought that they could do it, and they did. Knocked off the Canadians here tonight by a score of 2-1, to one, and it's time to name our Bud Player of the Game. It was Ray Ferrero until they scored. That was the Bud Player of the Game, but it was no. It was going to be the Bud Player of the Game, Tommy Soderstrom. Soderstrom stopped them all, all the way along. Bud Player of the Game. There we are, Tommy Soderstrom. A nice job he's done, and now is 3-1-2 in his last six games. Bow to the crowd as he was named as one of the three stars of tonight's Islander win. Final score at the Coliseum, 2-1. Islanders over the Canadians. We'll be back with more right after this. <laughs> 